Good morning. If I could ask the room to uh, come to order, please. Good morning. Good morning. Get your gavel out. Have a little knock. I, I don't like using the gavel. The gavel frightens me. There we go. I would uh, like to welcome you all to the ninth meeting of the Toronto East York Community Council. Uh, the Chair and members gratefully acknowledge that the Toronto East York Community Council meets on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Can I ask if there are any declarations of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? Seeing none. Uh, can I ask for a, moment, a motion to confirm the minutes of the sem September 2016th meeting? Councillor Bradford, minutes? No, I have to talk about the minutes. Yeah. Well, so I, I have uh, Councillor Fletcher, a point of order, or yeah. to speak to the minutes? Yeah, um, I'm just asking because there we had the lower Coxwell piece and it turns out staff didn't realize that the boundaries had changed, so that is a joint street. Um, with the parking lot actually being in the new Ward 14. So I think it's really important for years to come when somebody looks that they understand that that section of the street is both wards. So I'm asking that that be returned next meeting to sort that out because it's a bylaw. It was an actual bylaw change. So I'm just noting that that's incorrect and staff are going to correct that. Oh, okay, so um, next meeting. yeah, so what I'm going to rule is that the minutes accurately reflect what we did. Yes. So we can go ahead and approve the minutes, but I will, uh, the clerk is now aware that we may have to reconsider that item. And uh, I see Councillor Bradford nodding his head. So we'll arrange to have that on the next agenda. Uh, yes. But are there any other comments on the minutes? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Bradford, I believe you moved the minutes. So all those in favor, opposed, that carries. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's go through the agenda run through. Item 25. We're going to start on item 25 of the uh, summary agenda. That is on page, uh, I can't see page number, 43. Yes, page 43. Um, also, members, I want to note uh, Councillor Layton is going to be absent. He's in Copenhagen trying to save the planet. Good for him. Um, Councillor Cressy is on a board meeting conference call and may be late. And Councillor Bailao also had a meeting this morning and will be a bit late. So I'm going to be holding their items uh, until we know how to dispose of them. Um, but it means we're at bare quorum, so nobody can leave the room until one of them is made available. Uh, I have apologies from those councillors. Personally, I blame it on Premier Ford. Um, so, uh, item TE 9.25, appointments to BIAs. Um, that's councillors Bylaw and Layton, so I'll hold that for now. Uh, item TE 9.26, proposed official naming of future parks at 250 Davenport Road. That's councillor Layton, so I'll hold that until Councillor Cressy, who I believe has instructions, arrives. <clears throat> Item TE 9.27160 Front Street West Public Art Plan. That's Councillor Cressy, so I'll hold that. We may not get any business That's done. That's right. Item TE 9.28489539 uh, King Street West Public Art Plan. I will have to hold that for Councillor Cressy. Item TE 9.29220234 Simcoe Street and 121 St. Patrick Street Public Art Plan. That's Councillor Cressy. I'll have to hold that. No. We will get to business, I promise you. Item TE 9.30. I haven't done that one. Oh, I'm, I'm just getting that. 9.30688 Dundas Street East Public Art Plan. Councillor Wong Tam. 
Yes, good morning, Chair, and good morning, members. I'd like to move the uh, staff recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, that carries. Item TE 9.31, 40 Temperance Street, Public Art Plan. Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Again, I'd like to thank staff and to move the, the recommendations contained in the report. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.32. <coughs> King Parliament Secondary Plan Review, Proposed Secondary Plan. Uh, Councillor Wong Tam, that's you, and Councillor Cressy, can you move that? Uh, I can move that. I don't believe that we have any changes. Uh, perhaps what I'd like to do is just hold it down until Councillor So we'll hold it in your name? Case, yeah. Okay. This is fast. <laughs> Item uh, TE 9.33, that's the got deputations listed, so we'll hold that for deputations. Item TE 9.34462, Wellington Street West, Zoning Amendment Preliminary Report. Councillor Cressy, I'll hold that. It's like we're going to have two meetings. Item TE 9.3573, Queen's Park Crescent, Official Plan Amendment and Zoning Bylaw Amendment Applications, Preliminary Report. That's Councillor Layton. I'll hold that. It's got Mike's stuff to pass. Sure. Oh. <laughs> Item TE 9.36, Designation of Fire Routes and Amendment to Chapter 880, Fire Routes, 138 St. Helens. That's Councillor Bailao. I'll hold that. This is what we do when we have a shorter agenda. We make up for it by holding everything. <laughs> Item TE 9.37, Construction Staging Area Time Extension 4 Avenue Road. That's Councillor Late. Now hold that. Item TE 9.38, Construction Staging Area St. Patrick Street, 234 Simcoe Street. I will hold that for Councillor Cressy. Item TE 3. Point, or sorry, 9.39, Construction Staging Area 23 Spadina Avenue. Councillor Cressy, I will hold that. Item TE 9.40, Construction Staging Area Time Extension Phase 2 and 3 Markham Street, Mervish Village. That's Councillor Layton, I will hold that. Item TE 9.41, Construction Staging Area Time Extension 250 Davenport and 181 Bedford Road. That's Councillor Layton. I will hold that. Item TE 9.42, Construction Staging Area Time Extension Hazelton Avenue, 128 Hazelton Avenue. Councillor Layton. I will hold that. Item TE 9.43, Construction Staging Area 39 to 41 Roehampton Avenue. Councillor Matlow, welcome to the game. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm going to move in favor of the staff recommendation and just make mention that when a developer, in most cases, really wants to keep the sidewalk at AODA and keep two lanes of traffic open, they can figure out how to do it. And this is an example of when we can. Well done, Councillor Matlow, and we'll all take note of that and uh, bring it up in the meetings we have about construction staging. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Done. I like checking the items off. That felt good. Item TE 9.44, construction staging area 219 to 231 Dundas Street East. Councillor Wong Tam. Yes, thank you very much. I would like to move an amendment uh, and add a, a one additional clause to the long list of conditions that's already contained in the staff report. And uh, while the clerks get that on the screen, it's just to direct the applicant to create a publicly accessible website with regular construction updates and post that website address on the construction site hoarding, which will be prominently placed and legible from 20 meters on all elevations from the construction site. Uh, and then there's a series of, uh, this, of, uh, of uh, recommendations that have already come from staff, which we are very supportive of. We're having a bit of an issue with AV. Uh, 
I should take this moment to note uh, we have a couple of guests here today at the clerking table. The Scarborough Community Council had to schedule their meeting for a different day, so we thought we would bring the clerks from the Scarborough Community Council down to see how the real Community Council oh. deals with its business. I'm sorry, Gord. I think that's inflammatory. Oh, I withdraw it. Thank you. How a busy Community Council deals with its business. Okay, Gord. That's <laughs> inflammatory. I've had my fun. Okay. There we are. Great, thank thank you. you very much. Okay, uh, so we've seen the amendment. Why don't we take the amendment together with the item? All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.45, Construction Staging Portland Flood Protection and Enabling Infrastructure Project, Councillor Fletcher. Uh, yes, I'm gonna hold that because I don't see the traffic mitigation plan associated with this, Mr. Chair. Okay, so we'll hold that. It's a long item. Item TE 9.46, Installation Removal of On-Street Accessible Parking Spaces, September 2019, Delegated. Uh, I note that Councillor Bailao is one of the affected councillors, so I'll hold that until she's here to make sure that she has no issues. Item TE 9.47, Accessible Loading Zone, Russet Avenue. That's also Councillor Bailao, so I'll hold that. Item TE 9.48, Removal of Accessible Loading Zone, Chisholm Avenue. Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much. Through the Chair, I'd like to move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.49, Lane Designation and Parking Amendments, the Esplanade at Young Street. That's Councillor Cressy and Wong Tam. Uh, yes, I think I, I am pretty safe that we can move the, uh, uh, the staff recommendations. Okay. And this is all to make some modifications to improve TTC operations. Okay, on the item, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.50, Parking Amendments, Prince Arthur Avenue. That's Councillor Layton, so I'll hold that. Mr. Chair, could we get uh, the business uh, password for City of Toronto business visitor, please? Let's clerks get that for us so we can get Wi-Fi steadily in here. Wi-Fi? Yes, without using City of Toronto. If we get the business visitor one for the councillors, then we can stay on Wi-Fi not be moving on. So uh, could I ask, um, I imagine people in my office are listening. Could you contact someone from eight, uh, IT and have them come up and assist with the password? I would just ask because when we're here, if we yep. get that password regularly when we're at these meetings, then we'll be good on We'll make sure that the IT guys share that with uh, the clerk's office Thank in the future. You. But for now, uh, Mary, if you're listening, could you contact IT and have them send someone up? with the password. Item TE 9.51, uh, Councillor Matlow, Parking Amendments, Manor Road East. Uh, yeah, I ask you to support the staff recommendation and I just want to thank the Church of the Transfiguration and the daycare uh, for their leadership on making the street and the neighbourhood safer. Okay. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.52, Additional Parking Amendments, Construction Staging Area 158 Front Street, East, Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I'd like to move the staff recommendations. Uh, largely, this particular change in traffic uh, operations is to allow uh, for a safe passage uh, of, uh, of larger inbound, outbound maneuvers of heavy vehicles that are going through the St. Lawrence area. Very good, important work. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 9.53, Parking Amendments, Gowan Avenue. Councillor Fletcher. I'll recommend uh, no standing area, please. So that's the staff recommendation. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 9.54, Parking Amendments, Strathcona Avenue. Councillor Fletcher. I'd like to uh, 
support the staff recommendation to implement no parking area around the laneway exit. A resident was knocked uh, over, a uh, cyclist was knocked over by a car coming out of the lane. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor, opposed, carry. Item TE 9.55, parking amendments, Hannaford Street, Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much. I'd like to move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.56, Allway Stop Control, Brentdale Drive at Lawton Boulevard and at Lachelle's Boulevard. Councillor Matlow. Um, uh, I, I'm supporting the recommendation, and this is going to be working in concert with the new sidewalk that we're building on Brentdale as well. So we're making sidewalk. the neighborhood safer. Is it a lab? Are you, do you have sensors? Just a regular <laughs> sidewalk, not a an internet sidewalk? one, right? It'll be, it'll, it'll be a lovely sidewalk. <laughs> Very good. Well, Are I you surveilling anybody on that sidewalk? <laughs> No? no. Oh, okay. No. Okay. No data capture on that no side. No data. Okay. All well, those in favor? <laughs> Not supporting. Opposed. Data Carry. <laughs> Item TE 9.57, student pickup drop-off area, South Drive. That's Councillor Layton, so I'll hold that. Item TE 9.58, Commercial Boulevard Parking Appeal, 170 Bedford Road. That's Councillor Layton. I'll hold that. Jeez, these guys have a lot of items. Item TE 9.59, Commercial Boulevard Parking Appeal, 11 River Street. Councillor Wong Tan. Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. We'd like to, I would like to defer this indefinitely. Pardon me? I would like to defer this matter indefinitely. Okay, so a motion to defer indefinitely. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.60, introduction of overnight on-street permit parking, Rowanwood Avenue between Young Street and Clooney Drive. That's Councillor Layton, I'll hold that. Item TE 9.61, Extension of Permit Parking Hours, Castleview Avenue. Councillor Matlow. I move in support of the recommendation. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.62, install Proposed Installation of Speed Bumps, First East-West Public Lane, North of Dundas Street West, between Manning Avenue and Euclid Avenue. That's Councillor Layton. I will hold that. TE 9.63, Traffic Calming Speed Humps, Sibley Avenue. Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much. I'd like to move the alternative staff recommendations, please. And the alternative is to install? That's correct. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Oh, it's to poll and then on install. Okay. Good. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item 9.64, nominations for appointments to the Board of Management of Eastview Neighborhood Community Centre. Councillor Wong Tam. No, sorry. Oh, sorry. I need a motion to introduce new business. No, no, no I'm, I'm Eastview Community Centre. Pardon me? I am Eastview Community Centre. Oh, so sorry, the councillor is listed incorrectly. The ward number is correct. Oh, sorry about that. Again, I blame Premier Ford. <laughs> no, you can blame me. I used to be Ward 14. <laughs> I know. It's, You're having a hard time. I'm having a hard time with it. Okay. So, Councillor Fletcher on this item. I'm moving the recommendations and these great new board members. Are okay. And uh, new, and thank everybody for their service at this fantastic AOC. Very good. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 9.65, installing speed humps on Gilead Place between King Street East and Eastern Avenue. Councillor Wong Tan. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I'd like to move the recommendations uh, contained in the letter and to actually install those uh, speed humps, as, uh, as install, uh, investigate and, and oh. explore the installation of traffic calming. Oh, I'm very sorry to interrupt, Councillor. Uh, uh, there is a deputant who registered to speak on this item, so oh, we'll okay. have to hold it for deputations. Sure. 
my fault. I was so thrown by the misnomer in the last item that I, I lost track. <laughs> item TE 9.66, Parking Amendments, Torbrick Road, Councillor Fletcher. I'd like to move the uh, recommendation, please. All those in favor? Opposed? Oh, sorry, I'm deferring it indefinitely. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. My apologies. Well, we didn't vote, My so staff that's okay. On top of that. All right, so we have a motion defer. to defer indefinitely. All those in favor of the motion to defer? All those opposed? That carries. Item TE 9.67, approval of decorative fence at Church Street Public School. Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to move the, um, uh, the recommendation contained in the letter and, uh, and stipulate that this is a very exciting uh, public art installation that is also um, functioning as a fence at Church Street Public School. We brought together the very best of, uh, of, of two technical and artistic worlds. Uh, one is the designers uh, and the technical experts around lighting who worked with us on the, the Yorkville Bench Project. Uh, as well as the uh, artists uh, who worked on the Illuminous Veil, as uh, Councillor Fletcher will know. Uh, this is going to be a spectacular new addition uh, to Church Street Public School. Well done. I look forward to seeing it. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Item T 9.68, speed limit reduction. Okay, we're at that moment. I need a motion to introduce new business, items 68 through 80. Councillor Matlow, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Have these been circulated? Uh, 68 to 80, yeah. 68 through 80 were circulated, so we can do those now, or not. Item TE 9.68, speed limit reduction Niagara Steep. That's Councillor Cressy, so I'll hold that. Item TE 9.69, reopening of item TE 2.59, speed hump pull results Pendrith Street. That's Councillor Cressy, so I'll hold that. Item TE 9.70, parking amendments Elizabeth Street. That's Councillor Layton, so I'll hold that. Wow. <laughs> item TE 9.71, McMurrick Street. That's Councillor Layton, so I'll hold that. Item TE 9.72, speed limit reduction McCall Street. That's Councillor Cressy and Councillor Layton, so I'll hold that. Item TE 9.73, parking amendments, Humewood Drive. Councillor Matlow. I move my recommendations. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favor, opposed, that carries. Item TE 9.74, developing a traffic management and mitigation plan for the, for the St. Clair Avenue West and Bathurst Street planning framework area. Councillor Matlow. Well, I um, obviously move uh, the recommendations uh, contained in my letter and uh, just for context, uh, when, when I first uh, took office for the neighborhood in the last election, um, I initiated what's called um, a Bathurst and St. Clair framework, framework study, which has led to a framework to provide a vision for future growth in the area. And uh, there's, there is a lot of development pressure coming our way in the neighborhood. And what residents have been concerned about is the cumulative effect of that development pressure. So this is about being proactive and ensuring that whatever type of growth it is and whatever is approved in the future is done in a safe and manageable way to the best of our ability and to mitigate issues with respect to traffic and pollution, et cetera. Okay, on the contents in the letter, all those in favor, opposed that carries. Item TE 9.75, installation of speed humps on Harvey Avenue, Rochdale Avenue and Kitchener Avenue. Uh, that's Councillor Bailao, so I will hold that. I'm going to have firm words with some of our colleagues later on. Uh, 
<laughs> item TE 9.76, reopening of the item TE 8.54, traffic calming speed humps Gladstone Avenue, Peel Avenue to Dundas West. That's Councillor Bailao, so I will hold that. Item TE 9.77, parking amendments Edwin Avenue, Ruskin Avenue to DuPont Street. Councillor Bailao, so I will hold that. Item TE 9.78, Parking Amendment Pelham Avenue, Councillor Bailao, I will hold that. Item TE 9.79, Parking Amendments Westmoreland Avenue between Bloor Street West and Shanley Street, Councillor Bailao, I will hold that. Item TE 9.80, Speed Bump Removal public lane south of Queen Street East between Boardwalk Drive and Woodbine Avenue. Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much. I'd uh, like to move the recommendations in the letter, please. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Okay, so now we turn to the 9.30... Uh, Do you have new business? We, we have I have two more pieces. I have to look at them. Okay. Yeah, there are a couple of pieces of business still to come, but they haven't been reviewed or circulated yet. Um, so we now turn to our 9.30 items, beginning with item TE 9.1, naming of an existing public lane south of Barton Avenue extending easterly from Clinton Street. Uh, normally I would call for deputations at, at this time, but I'm going to hold this until Councillor Cressy is here to give us advice on what how Councillor Layton wanted to dispose of the item. Item TE 9.2, naming of existing public lane bounded by Harbour Street, Manning Avenue, Bloor Street West and Clinton Avenue. Uh, same, it's Councillor Layton's item, so I will hold it. Item TE 9.3, naming of two existing public lanes intersecting Wellesley Street East and Church Street East in the Church Wellesley neighbourhood. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? I see none. Uh, so, Councillor, are there any questions of staff? Seeing none, Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to move the recommendations in the staff report and to name the specific lanes Dapper Lane as well as Anvil Alley. I'll just speak very quickly to it. Um, Dudley's Hardware Store has been a long-standing uh, hardware uh, store within the Church and Wellesley catchment area, our neighborhood, uh, and uh, the laneway that's closest to that store is now going to be called uh, Anvil Alley. Uh, this is a name that uh, was canvassed uh, by the community. There was some very good support for that. Um, and then there's another lane um, that actually reflects the uh, the number of barber shops in the Church and Wellesley neighborhood where uh, a lot of the handsome and dapper people go to get their haircuts. I've gone there myself um, and uh, and as it's <laughs> as a handsome and dapper person and uh, and these uh, and this lane will be called Dapper Lane. So it's part of the right. ongoing uh, body of work that has been happening in the Church and Wellesley neighborhood. Uh, we are actively naming all the, the, the sort of orphan laneways and alleyways um, and uh, the community is having some fun, obviously, as we uh, continue to, to go forward to make sure that these lanes actually have a proper name, but they can also be found in case um, there is an emergency. Uh, makes it much easier for our first responders. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've been meaning to ask you where you get your hair cut. I'm kind of in need of a trim myself. Um, so on the item, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.4. Uh, 2010 through 2016 Bathurst Street, official plan amendment and zoning amendment, final report. Are there any members of the public who wish to give a deputation on this item? Seeing none, any questions of staff? No? Councillor Matlow. Um, I move in support of these staff recommendations. All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 9.5. 26 through 40 Birch Avenue, zoning bylaw amendment application final report. I have two deputants listed, Stefan Moores. Stefan? Hi, Stefan, come on up. Hi, 
Hi, good morning. Just take a seat. Anyone you like is fine. Uh, just make sure the microphone button in front of you is lit up. Okay, you're good. So you'll have five minutes, Stefan, and you can watch your time on the clock over here to my right. Thank you for coming. Please begin. Thanks so much for having me, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Stefan Moores. Uh, my wife and I live at 52 Birch Avenue, which is seven doors down from the development. Um, we live there with our three sons, who are all students in Cottingham Public School down the block. And um, today, uh, while I'm here speaking with my own words, I very much represent um, over 20 households, 40 residents on Birch Avenue, which is a street of only about 40 residences or 50 residences in general, maybe 60 or 70, but I'm not a math major, so I'll let uh, the planners tell me what that number is. Um, as a bit of background, I'm uh, neither a professional, not in my backyarder, nor an anti-development activist. Um, in fact, I was a developer for a decade myself, and uh, I believe in density. I firmly believe in a lot of the other elements that this project does represent. Um, and yet over the past year, my neighbors and I have uh, been part of a group of more than, yeah, more than 40 of us and about more than 40 meetings, whether with city councilor, uh, with the developer, with uh, their group, uh, with city planning, and many uh, varying mixes of that group. And um, given what we learned over that time, t my, my brief remarks today could take a couple of different paths. Uh, it could be a really angry rant and a pretty angry bunch of people. I'm not one of the more angry ones. I'm a little one of the more surprised ones. Uh, instead, though, I think rather than sitting complaining about the multiple variances, which we believe are extreme across the board, uh, I'm going to reflect a few what we hope are constructive comments that planning and others might consider in their own neighborhoods when, when they are evaluating plans of this size. So I'd like to describe it in three quick different components. One, the experience with city planning. The second, the experience with the developer themselves. And the third, the experience uh, with our councillor. Um, as far as our experience with the city, I will tell you that we will thank them for being cordial and available. Kevin, thank you for you and your team for always being available to us when we reach out to you. It was sincerely appreciated. Um, while we disagree on a number of the decisions that were made, you, you guys are the pros, and we respect that those decisions were made. Um, we fundamentally believe that the variances requested and the degree of variance requested and the financial windfall that that will bestow upon this developer or others in a similar circumstance is remarkably disproportionate uh, on a number of levels. Uh, we recognize that planning has decided it fits within the official plan and so therefore this degree of variance is appropriate. Um, and we recognize that it's a losing fight to try and fight that. Uh, so we're not gonna take that battle. Um, what we will do, though, is uh, ask that the group decide if such variances and such windfalls are appropriate and deemed legitimate under the official plan, why is there no mechanism for a Section 37 don designation, donation, or voluntary contribution, or non involuntary contribution, for buildings under 10,000 square meters? The windfalls bestowed on these size buildings is genuinely large, and yet there's not one ounce of obligation for a developer to come in and contribute anything in any formulaic manner uh, to a local community. So that to me is a fundamental question that I think this group should really ask itself and decide, you know, is that something we want to consider? So that's something we leave with you. As a bunch of shock residents who are just absolutely in awe that a building that we think is way bigger and larger and massed and all the rest, but you know, the planning group approved it, but why is there no way for them to extract some kind of proportionate contribution from the developer. So I think that's the single first thing we'd like people to consider. Uh, the second is our experience with the developer themselves. Initially, we didn't think it started well. You know, we thought the level of engagement was absolutely minimal, and we were a little disappointed with that. You know, as a community living seven doors down, you'd expect to get a little bit more warmth, a little bit more engagement. Um, what we will say, they didn't have to come to the table with anything. Uh, when we did reach out as a group, it took a bit of time, but eventually, you know, Jordan, team, Thank you guys, wherever you are. Thank you for guys coming to the table when you didn't have to. You know, you did it. And it was appreciated and it continues to be appreciated. And as a result, they made a financial commitment, a voluntary Section 37. The community is very appreciative of it. I recognize I got 30 seconds left. Um, what I will say lastly is our experience with our counselor and his exceptional assistant, Denise, wherever you are. Um, thank you, Denise. Uh, you should raise your hand. You've been exceptional to work with. 
I uh, just want to say thank you guys for listening, for being realistic in a system that we tried our best to navigate on our own. We felt very supported and we felt like we got some backing, but not binary. We felt like it was a consistent, steady, consistent and steady, supportive yet realistic approach. That's I know I'm at five minutes. Final thought? My final thought would simply be this isn't about being anti-development. It's not being about anti-developer. It's simply that when disproportionate benefits are bestowed on any development or development application, we hope that you'll look at the system for the medium and smaller size buildings to consider that why is there no obligatory community contribution? Okay, thank you very much. Buildings. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the deputant? Oh, don't worry, I won't tell anyone if you applaud. Um, no questions of the deputant? Stefan, thank you. Okay, thank you very uh, much, appreciate your time. Michael Goldberg. Mr. Chairman, members of committee, I'm Michael Goldberg. I'm a principal at Goldberg Group, and we are the planning consultants for the applicant. Um, I thank staff for their, um, uh, for their um, judicious review of this application. I think that this really is a very good example of how moderate intensification within the neighborhoods can, in fact, happen. Uh, and it might be a model pursuant to the resolution that was passed by Council earlier this summer. Um, I understand that there will be, we, we are here to express support of the staff recommendations, but I also understand that there will be an additional motion concerning the voluntary Section 37 uh, contribution, and um, I'm here to indicate that uh, uh, what was offered is what continues to be offered voluntarily by the uh, by the applicant, and I really have no further comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions for the deputant? No, seeing none. Thank you very much for your time today. You're, you're welcome. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none. Uh, are there any questions of staff on the item? No. Councillor Matlow to speak. So as was uh, just noted, I do have a motion um, to um, do what the provincial government uh, doesn't do, as Stefan alluded to earlier, which is to ensure that there are uh, significant community benefits when uh, development of this scale is considered. Um, this achievement is the achievement of both my office and the local residents. Uh, no more than, um, uh, than two individuals, uh, Julie and Stefan, who are here, who have been remarkable partners in um, not just opposing what they oppose, but also working incredibly hard to arrive at a resolution that will benefit the place that they live and their neighbors live and improve their quality of life. And I also want to acknowledge Denise, who did remarkable work on our behalf. Um, this, this proposal um, took uh, several different meetings, working group meetings, discussions. There were times when it seemed, uh, I think you know, we described it as a bit of a quagmire. Uh, there was no way through. There was no way to resolve it. Uh, the community was dead set against this development. There were significant concerns about the precedent that it possibly could uh, set for the neighborhood, and there are already concerns around uh, parking and other uh, 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 significant concerns that they were worried about being exacerbated. But I think we dealt with this pragmatically, and we realized what we were dealing with, we realized what was in front of us, and our entire attention went into, how do you leave this better than you found it? And I want to acknowledge um, Jordan Masarudi, Ma Marasuti rather, uh, and his team for um, willing, his willingness, their willingness to be at the table figuratively and literally with us to arrive at a plan that will benefit the community. There are not only significant uh, changes to the initial proposal itself with respect to the built form, but as you can see, there will be uh, a significant contribution uh, to our quality of life in the community. And I look forward to hosting a meeting soon where then we can together go back to the community and discuss a really positive subject, which is these wonderful investments that we can make um, to, uh, to, uh, to the neighborhood. Um, 
it was a difficult conversation, but we arrived. And I, again, just want to acknowledge everyone for uh, being the grown-ups at the table that were necessary uh, to um, perhaps uh, you know, make, make some lemonade out of the lemon that we were dealing with initially. But ultimately, I think this is going to be a win-win uh, for everyone. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so why don't we take the amendment and the item together? All those in favour? Opposed? That carries. Item TE 9.6, 3258 to 3260 Dundas Street West, Draft Plan of Common Elements Condominium and Part Lot Control exempt Exemption Applications Final Report. Are there any members of the public who want to make a deputation on this item? I see none. Are there any questions of staff? Seeing none, uh, I just I can't call the vote until Councillor Matlow is back in his seat. Not yet. No, I just can't call a vote when you're out of your seat. Um, all those uh, in favour? Opposed? That carries. Item TE 9.7, 117 to 127 Broadway Avenue, Rental Housing Demolition Application. I have a listed deputant, uh, Bob Murphy. Bob, are you here? Good morning. How are you today? Hanging in there. We'll find out. Um, so, Bob, you have uh, five minutes to speak, and you can watch your time on the clock over there to my right. Thank you. The uh, promised report is not here, but I did read the interim report, which was June 18th. I was part of a group with Ann Johnson and Kay Gardner who fought five years to save 790-800-840 Eglinton Avenue West. At one point, the developer asked for an order that council give him his demolition permit. The city council, for whatever reason, the city's council, for whatever reason, did not tell the court the buildings are in receivership because of a Graymac mortgage. So the court ordered issuance of the demolition permit. When it came to a vote, June Rollins left. So did Jack Layton, uh, Joanne Campbell, David Revel, Joe Pantaloni, and many others. Rollins said at the time, there are thousands of these buildings in this city. And in fact, without them, no housing policy is possible in this city. Today, the clear message needs to be sent to condo developers to keep their hands off rental housing. The applicant promises to relocate the tenants and bring them back, but in the interim, 131 units will be tied up to accommodate him. 131 people will go without housing because of him. We will not know who they are, only that the housing they might have found was occupied by tenants displaced from Broadway Avenue for him. And if Kathleen Wynne was so progressive, why didn't she make a component of affordable housing mandatory for anything built under her growth plan? I was at OMB Lab July 29th when the other buildings referred to in this report in Councillor Robinson's ward and Kathleen Wynne's riding were there for rezoning. The OMB Lab member, Reed Rossi, asked the city's planner if it was good planning. She said, under oath, yes. But there was no planning before the board that day, just design, and there is a difference between planning and design. If I may cite as authority councillor Matt Lowe, who told the North Toronto Post that while he supports the intent of the growth plan, nothing in the provincial legislation ensured that infrastructure would keep up with that pace of growth. If that is so, the provincial planners will have signed off on a plan that does not meet professional standards of what a plan is supposed to be. That is what the city planner should have said in response to Reed Rossi's question. The growth plan, a provincial regulation, does not meet the standard of Section 2 of the Planning Act, most notably subsections H, I, J, P, and L. Instead, a city planning report on another oversized project at Young and Heath includes the phrase that the growth plan provides a strategic framework for managing growth. Apparently, the phrase strategic framework means, ah, who cares about infrastructure? Midtown and Focus took the growth plan, which conveyed no density or zoning rights, and converted it to as of right zoning rights, throwing in some empty rhetoric about social services and infrastructure. 
When June Rollins and Jack Layton and Joanne Campbell and David Revel stood up for the rights of tenants not to be treated like second-class citizens to be shunted about at the whim of a speculator, they had no power or authority to do so. Today, this Community Council has that prerogative, and the right use of that prerogative is to exercise it in favour of tenants and housing and to refuse this application. Section 2L of the Planning Act is of particular interest. It speaks to the protection of the financial and economic well-being of the province and its municipalities. Now, Councillor Perks and Councillor Cressy have both called for above-inflation property tax increases to subsidize condo developers. Uh, John Sewell wrote in 2011, well, I don't mean it that way. John Sewell wrote in 2011 that it would take a 7.5% property tax increase to maintain services with all this new density. This runaway density is a danger to the financial and economic well-being of this municipality and to the residents in it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputant? I just have one question. Councillor Fletcher. Um, are you concerned, I, I hear all of your concerns, but uh, what's in front of me right now is that that rental housing would only be secured for 20, 20 years. Uh, yeah, he, um, the developer spoke with me before this session and he did say that uh, as long as the tenant remains in the unit, it's for perpetuity. It's if the tenant moves and another tenant comes in, it would be for the 20 years. So there are a few tenants from 117 who have come down to speak to that in any event. Do you not understand that, that they could be converted to something other than rental after 20 years? That's how I read that. Oh yeah, because it, it, I, I, I think the short way of explaining it is if a tenant left, it would be decontrolled. That as long as the tenant remains, it's perpetuity, but if the tenant moves, then it's decontrolled, and which is, uh, it is, it does represent a loss of rental housing in the long run, because these two buildings, as long as they stay there, they've been there a long time, they will always stand as, as a source of rental housing. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions of the deputant? Seeing none, thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation? Yes, please come forward. Good morning, sir and madam. Uh, I'm a tenant. Well, could you please, just, just before you start, uh, welcome. Um, you'll have five minutes to make your deputation. Could you start by giving us your name? My name is Socorro Corazon Federico, and I'm a, and I'm, a, I'm just sorry, I'm nervous. I'm a tenant of 117 Broadway. Last year, uh, we had a meeting with the city and the the builder. We were given a, a presentation of financial con compensation. It depends upon how long did we stay in the building. But as we browse along east or west side and in, along Yang, the, the rent is too high. And the compensation that the builder would offer us is not uh, enough, sir, even for a year. They, 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 gave, they gave us the option that we can go back after the, after the construction of the rental building. But the problem is, when is the construction of the rental building? And uh, we just want also to know the clause that they said that you will pay the similar rent, which is vague on the tenants. What is similar rent? Is it similar rent along the community or the similar rent that the rent that we will live from the time that we will live that they will give us? The, 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 for example, I'm paying uh, 900 a month. Will that 900 a month be the, the rent when we come back? That's the only thing, sir. And it's hard to get a, it's hard to get a one bedroom right now, which is, I'm paying, for example, I'm paying 900. And right now it's between 1600 to 
$1,800 a month. And we are only immigrants, sir. We came here, we came here for a better life for our children, for our grandchildren, but how can we, how can we survive with the $1,600, $1,800 a month, wherein we are only earning a middle income for a month? We only get a pay-to-pay -pay check. That's only my concern, sir. If the city or the builder could give us a place that that could suffice on our income or that could suffice on our current uh, yeah, okay. rent because the compensation that they will give us is not really enough it's not it's just for a year sir and construction would be they say is three years so the two the two remaining years where will we get the difference of 600 or 700 a month so excuse me sir so so would you like to depute as well? Yeah. Could you oh. please give, uh, can I just, ah, okay. yes, sir. I want to handle this so that uh, everyone has equal opportunity to speak. Are there any deputants, are there any questions of the first deputant? No, seeing none. If you'd like to introduce yourself, you also can have five minutes. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much for your deputation. Okay, my name is Maria Lilian Alcasid. I live at uh, 117 Broadway Avenue. My only concern is, sir, um, they uh, told us that uh, they're going to give us um, compensation. So, but the problem is we don't know when is the building going to build or they're going to tear up when. So my concern is if we move somewhere, if we move somewhere, um, instead of uh, getting the compensation, in my case or in, on behalf of uh, my co-tenants, we would like uh, uh, the owner, instead of uh, uh, paying the difference in case of, uh, you know, in rental, if we go somewhere and then the rent is 1000 and then uh, they pay the difference. Because right now I'm paying uh, 1444 a month. So if I get a one bedroom in a different area, for example, 2000 I would like the owner to pay for the difference until they relocate us to the new building. That's all, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, Thank Councilor you so Fletcher, much. Did you have a question you wanted uh, to ask? Yes, I do have a couple of questions. Oh, please, 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 before Hello. you go away. I just have a hi, few questions. Have a seat. Councillor Fletcher yeah. would like to ask you a question. Um, okay, sir. Did, have you received anything from the landlord about requiring you to move out? No. So you've not received? We're not signing anything yet. You're not uh, signing we're anything. We're just waiting for the to uh, notice. And uh, luckily, we have uh, a meeting right now. So uh, th I asked the owner if uh, I'd rather uh, <coughs> he pays for the difference. Yes, I understand. We're willing to I move, but uh, yeah, yes. I hear you. Uh, because have you been offered any money? No, not but, yet. Okay. Not yet. Have you met with the planning staff that deal with rental housing from the City of Toronto? Oh, uh, we had a meeting uh, last year with uh, the city and the owner. Planning or people that deal uh, people with People from rental. the city? Yeah. I'll ask the planning staff. <coughs> yes. That yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Hi, come on forward. Could you tell us your name, please? Joe Hoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N. I'm counsel for the owner reserve properties and the owner's with me here today. Okay, Joe, welcome. You have five minutes. Good morning, uh, members of the committee, Mr. Chair. I I'm here to respond, I think, to some of the concerns raised and hope to provide some points of clarification. Uh, we've been working with planning staff for over a year with respect to the development approvals that were approved unanimously by the City Council, has been approved by LPAT. We've also been working on the rental housing application materials. This application is to demolish existing, two existing buildings, 131 units, and replace them in an adjacent site at 100 Broadway and 223-233 Redpath. 
Uh, currently, only 86 units are occupied. Out of those 86 units, 59 have not been provided previous notice before the development applications have occurred. Additional 36 have, and they're aware that these development approvals and a demolition was to occur. Through you, Mr. Chair, Ms. Fletcher raised a question about the perpetuity of these rental. Councillor Fletcher raised a question about the perpetuity of these rental housing units. I think it's important to note that the replacement units are being provided in an adjacent site that was approved and will be under construction shortly. It's a smaller scale building, so it's anticipated that building will be built in a shorter course. And as well, it's a rental purpose built building. So while those units are guaranteed under the Section 111 agreement that we'll be entering to the city for 20 years, it will continue to be a rental building in perpetuity. And if they wanted to convert that building to a condominium building, for example, another Section 111 application would have to occur and be brought before council. I think it's also important just to clarify some of the rental compensation terms that are being provided by our client, because in my experience in dealing with a number of these projects, these uh, financial compensations that have been agreed to with the city are, are, are generous. Our clients offering three months in accordance with the Residential Tenancies Act, of course. The tenure payment is significant. Um, I've seen one month for five years. This is five months for five years. So it's increasing by four months for each um, category of tenure. There's also a special needs payment, which is typical for anyone with special needs, additional four months um, payment. What's important here to note too is our client is going above and beyond those standard conditions. They're hiring a full-time leasing agent that is planning to work with these individuals to find them homes in the interim. And our client hasn't provided notice yet because the Section 111 agreement hasn't been registered on title and there'll be a six-month opportunity to find new housing from the date the Section 111 agreement is registered on title. There's also significant improvements that are being provided as part of this demolition and the redevelopment of the of the property. The property has passed its useful life. It's in need of repair. And what we'll see is significant improvement. The new building will have amenity space, which the current building does not have, and tenants will have access to that amenity space. The new units will also have on-street laundry, central air conditioning, a private balcony. Again, those are amenities that aren't currently being provided in the existing units. So when the tenants who all have a right to return do return, the quality of their, of, of their housing will be vastly improved. Just more generally on the merits of the development application as a whole, the rental housing unit mix is being increased in a beneficial way to, to families. Right now, there are 98 one-bedroom apartment units. The replacement is going to be 18 one-bedroom and 82 bedroom, so an increase there. The development that's being, that was approved by council and that now is subject to this demolition control application is also providing a 62-person daycare facility on site, as well as a beautiful public park on the corner of Broadway and Mount Pleasant. So overall, there are a number of community benefits that are being introduced as part of this development, and our client has worked hard with staff over the last year and gone in what is my respectful submission above and beyond what are the typical standard requirements with respect to rental housing. Um, those are my submissions, unless there are any questions from Community Council. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fletcher has a question. Can you, uh, what is the new price point for these units if someone isn't coming back? I can, I can answer that, Councillor Fletcher, through you, Mr. Chair. There was a question raised about if I've got an affordable unit today that's at $900, what will be the rent when I come back? The, the way, the typical um, fashion in which this is uh, structured is that you will, a tenant with an existing rent will pay the exact same rent when they return subject to uh, a 4% increase for a new build. So they're going to sign, you're going to give them an N13. That's exactly. And they're going to say that they're coming back and they're going to come back at their rent with the allowable rent increase that, for those tenants coming back. That's exactly. What's the price point for the units where somebody is not coming back? Affordable units will be provided at an affordable rent, and that's the same price as the CMHC. So 131 will be average market rent. N no, that's, that's not correct. So, so there's 131 said. units. There's a rental. There's a breakdown of existing units. So many units are affordable. So many units are mid, are mid range, and so many units are high range. There's 72 affordable units in this building, 58 mid range, and only one high end. 
So out of those 130 units which have either affordable or mid-range rents, those will be replaced on-site at those affordable or mid-range rents. So you just told me about the building. Currently, there's how many units? The same, 131? There's 131 units. Okay, next question. How many are occupied? 86. 86. And those are at ranges of rents that, like the tenants that visit us here this morning? That's correct. So when you're saying 72 affordable, what's the affordable rental rate that you've discussed? The well, it, it will be the lesser of the two. So if you're an existing tenant, you will pay the lesser of your existing rent plus a 4% increase for the new build, or if you're an affordable unit, the, the affordable unit rate in the city of Toronto, whatever is the lesser of the two. So here's how you're, you have 86 people that are currently there that could come back and you've got 72 units set aside for affordable. How do you square that? So, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I think it's important to note out of those 86 units, 59 were pre-approval tenants. So tenants who existed, who lived in the building before it was notification about the dev development applications were provided. 36 of those units, uh, of those individuals who, are exist who reside in the building today were aware when they moved in about those development applications. And with respect to those 36, our client is offering, although it's not always typical, a right of return, and he's also offering to provide moving expenses uh, for those individuals. So those individuals are getting added benefit here. So when did you first put the application in? Pardon me. When was the application first put in? I don't have the exact date. I believe 2015. It was done by a previous owner. Our client subsequently bought the development site. And after that, 36 people moved in. That's correct. And uh, their rents are the same range that are deputant? They would either be affordable or mid-range because there are always, there's only one high-end unit in the building. No, I'm talking about existing. Yes, all existing tenants would either have affordable or mid-range rents because there's no high-end units in the building. When you're, and I'm calling affordable, are you calling affordable our deputants' rent? I, 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 if, if they said $900 a month, that would be affordable. In, in, so that, what are you calling affordable? Uh, affordable is, 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 is done by, is, affordable is calculated based on the CMHC yeah. rent. I don't have that exact number before me. Um, but it's, a, it's an average that's taken in the City of Toronto and it's done on I, I a quarterly basis. So the 36 who moved in, moved in with that rent? Either affordable or mid-range. Mid-range is 1.5, the CMHC average. Yeah. So how many are at affordable and how many are at mid-range? Um, 36. So, and through you, Mr. Chair, it's, it actually goes one step further. So even if the units are vacant, those units are either categorized as affordable or mid-range. I'm just talking about people now, not units. I'm talking about the tenants that are there now. Um, I, I, you know, I don't have the exact numbers. It would be a certain amount would be affordable and a certain amount of the existing tenants would be mid-range. Of the 36? Of the post-approval, that's correct. And, but you can't tell me what that breakdown is between average market rent and 1.5, and you can't tell me the average market rent based on your affordable numbers. So no, does well, the staff know that number? They probably do, no, uh, Councillor Fletcher, but what I can say, I know we're speaking about individuals, but I think it's important to note that even if a unit's vacant, the last rent that was paid is going to be categorized as either affordable and mid-range and replaced in the new building as affordable or mid-range. I understand. I'm just asking about 59 tenants that have the right to return at the exact same rate. That's what you've told me, right? That's correct. And there's 36 who I'm not sure what their rent is and how many are at 1.5 currently and how many are at... But, but they have a right to return. No, I no, they all have a right to return. So I, knocking the building down. I've Councillor Fletcher, are, are those all your questions? Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members who wish to ask the deputy any questions? No, seeing none, thank you very much. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Okay, I see none. Oh, yes, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't, didn't see you there. You were, you were in my blind spot. Please do come up and uh, give us your name. 127 Broadway. 
Hi, John. You have five minutes, and you can watch your time on the clock over there to my right. Yes. Okay, I'm um, a resident in 127 Broadway. I'm here on behalf of everybody else in the building. Um, I don't understand how they were getting the opportunity to keep building these condos in the area, smash down these buildings that a lot of people can't afford the new rent that they have on today at $2,000 a month. Um, yet all these people that live on Broadway in the houses on the east side of Mount Pleasant, they're going to be losing the sun in the evening because I've already lost it on Broadway for four or five hours during the evening. Now, a lot of people that do live on Broadway in the houses there like to have a garden, but that's going to be gone now because of all these condos that are blocking away the sun in the period of the time, which, you know, are, the, are these people going to be compensated for taxes? I don't think anybody ever caught to that point, and I don't think a lot of people on Broadway Avenue know that, that have expensive houses and pay high taxes. And yet they just keep building these condos. I mean, the whole area is just totally congested. Um, I don't know. I, I guess it's all about the money, it seems like it. I mean, they're building a city within a city at Young and Eglinton. It's just so crowded there. And yet, I don't know, like, basically they got the approval to smash down 127 Broadway, the building beside it, the building across the street from it to build these condos. And I don't think it's fair for the people that are going to be thrown on the street, basically. who can't afford to pay $1,800, $2,000, $2,400 a month for rent. So... Thank you. Doesn't, are, are those, doesn't all, make sense. Are those all your thoughts for us today? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, thank you very much. I don't understand much. why anybody on Broadway Avenue that have these houses okay. are, are for, because of the fact that they're losing the sun because of all these condos going up. Okay. Are there any questions of the deputy? No? Thank you very much for your time and your thoughts today. Are there any other members of the public who wish? Yes, please. Hi, good morning. Could you give us your name? My name is Rachel Barreca. I work, Hi, Rachel. I live so in... you'll have five minutes and you can watch your time on the clock over okay, there to my right. Okay, thank you. I don't know where that clock is. Oh, that clock. Okay. So uh, I'm a resident of 117 Broadway, and I've been there for um, over five years now. Um, I live in the neighborhood that my father grew up in, um, and when I first moved in, it still felt like a neighborhood. Um, in the last five years, what I have noticed is the crawl of condo building in the city in general, but definitely in the Young and Eglinton area and in that community that I live in. And what I've also observed is the crumbling of a sense of community. I have noticed massive impacts on transit, on the amenities in the area, on traffic, on safety on the streets in terms of being able to actually cross streets and feel like they're safe places. The Eglinton Crosstown construction obviously has an impact on that. Um, what I've noticed is a really diverse group of people that I live with in that area. Um, and I know that I am a person who makes a salary that will um, allow enough wiggle room that I would be able to technically afford the high rents in this city. Um, but I am one person and I am supporting one person and I live in a building and around buildings where um, there are families uh, that have to make their money stretch way farther. So I am concerned about the diversification of our, our communities in Toronto and how that is slipping away as our rents go up and condos go up and all these impacts happen. I had a conversation with one of my neighbors yesterday who said, I'm going to have to move my child from her school. That's the only school that she's known. All of, you know, I think about my, my life and all the things that I have set up about my life in the area that I live in right now, and I'm one person. It takes effort and time and energy to uproot one's life. And when you are talk about impacting children, that's a whole other level. I want to talk about
the fact that when I go into a higher rent place, that the wiggle room will become so small that my savings, my life savings are going to be impacted because I will not be able to put as much money away for my retirement. So when we talk about these buildings going up and um, developments increasing, I'm not sure that um, those kinds of long-term impacts on our communities and our, our citizenry and our society are always taken into consideration. So I'm not suffering. I'm not, I'm not standing here saying that I'm a person who's suffering. I am luckier than most. So I'm actually here also to speak for the people who are not as lucky as me. Um, but I worry. I worry about what my life savings are going to be like when I have to spend so much money on rent and so much money on transit and so much money on all these things that keep going up and up in this city. So I know that this building is coming down. Um, I'm not um, here to say stop it at this point because I know that that's not realistic. So I'm taking this opportunity to say here are some of the real life impacts for people like me and the, my neighbours. Um, and I just want this part of the City Council to at least hear this message again. I'm sure I'm not the first person who said this, but I want it to be heard again that um, the pace of development is irrevocably changing the fabric of this city, and it worries me how it's changing it. We are not staying, we are building faster than we can cope with, and I really want the people in this room to hear that. Um, the trees are coming down in this city. When the building next door to me was torn down and that development um, started, they tore down a whole green space beside our building. And this is gonna sound corny as hell, but I wept for those trees. But I also, and I literally did, I came home one day and they'd been ripped down and I thought, we're literally tearing out the lungs of this city so that concrete structures can go up. And we know what concrete does to the environment. So I also want to talk about environmental impact of all these condo buildings going up and blocking sun. Thank you for saying that, sir. Blocking sun. I hardly see the sun anymore in my building because of the development going up next door. So I, I thank you for your time and I, I hope you hear the human message that I want to send today. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the deputy? Seeing none, thank you for coming and sharing your thoughts today. Thank you for your time. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, are there any questions of staff? Councillor Fletcher. Um, pardon? Did you want to ask questions? I just want to ask about all the rental replacement issues. Who's ever can answering those? Um, Uh, Councillor Matt, would you like to ask questions of staff first? Are you sure? Yeah, Happy to do it. Go ahead. Okay. Councillor Fletcher. Thank you. Just, I just want to understand a little bit better uh, the rental replacement for this building. So there's 131 <coughs> units that exist there, and we've heard from the developer that um, when it's finished, 72 will be affordable, 58 will be what we're calling mid, but it's not in our official plan, 1.5 average market rent, and one high end. Is that right? To the chair, yes, that's correct. Um, I'd just like to note the mid-range um, is defined in our official plan as well. Part, I cannot hear you. So the mid-range um, rent is defined in our official plan as one and a half times the affordable rent. Okay, so we're calling it mid-range, we're not calling it affordable. No, there is affordable, so affordable is defined as 100% of the CMHC average market rent, and mid-range is defined as one and a half times the affordable. And what is the mid, what is the uh, average market rent for this zone, for this area, for these apartments? So it's citywide um, average market rents, and so for a one bedroom, the 2019 rent is 1270 a month. Uh, but you have worked with the developer to guarantee that the 59 people who are still there will move in at their current, move out and move back in at their current rents. Yes, that's correct. So they don't have to meet the uh, 1270. If somebody's paying 900, they will move back in 900 plus whatever uh, increases they're able to be awarded under rent control. Yes, that's right? correct. And... Um, 
this 20 years, is that common? That is just 20 years, uh, and then it would be renewed. Do you have any way to get? Do you have any way to secure anything longer than 20 years? I believe you do. 20 years is our standard practice, as um, noted in the development guidelines. I understand. Uh, but basically, after 20 years, they would have to apply to the city if they wanted to convert those. And my units. question is, do you have any other way to secure a longer term? It would have to be through negotiation. And you didn't. So many, many are 99 or 50. We're just at 20. Is there some reason why it's only 20? Considering. Um, through the chair, there are there are some lease agreements on properties for 99 years that have been entered into for the city for various d different functions. Um, this the kind of standard practice that has been followed through the work we've been doing on most applications is to secure uh, the rents for 20 years. Okay, so this is just standard uh, standard procedure. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions of staff? No. Uh, to speak, Councillor Matlow. Today you, um, you heard from residents of our Young and Eglinton neighbourhood who have raised concerns that have been um, ongoing for years. Um, the, I think the two issues, though, that have been conflated today are the ongoing issues with respect to quality of life due to the development in the Urban Growth Centre and the rental um, uh, replacement and relocation agreement that is actually before us today. So I'm going to speak to the former before the latter, because it has to be said. Um, in 2005, uh, 2005, 2006, the province uh, created a uh, piece of legislation called the Places to Grow Act. And along with that, there was a growth plan. And the wisdom behind it was real, which was that we need to have some reasonable intensification within our urban areas to mitigate the sprawl on the Oak Ridge's moraine and the green belts and aquifers and, and wildlife corridors and, uh, and uh, prime agricultural lands. Where that policy failed by the provincial government was that there was nothing in that that ensured that our quality of life in the Young and Eglinton neighborhood would keep up with the pace of growth. And what happened over the ensuing years was that we have found ourselves with a dearth of infrastructure. We have found ourselves with a dearth of capacity in our schools. The TDSB had to take the sixth grade classes out of all the elementary schools and put them into Hodgson, which itself will have to have an addition soon. We don't have enough affordable childcare. We don't have enough of a number of different social services and infrastructure and park space to provide the quality of life that every resident, no matter where you live in the city, should be able to expect. We have a broken governance structure when it comes to planning in this city. So what we did in this generation is that we worked on a plan called Midtown and Focus, which actually turns the narrative around that focuses on social services and infrastructure and parks. And we finally got it approved last year. And then Doug Ford was elected, and then this year he announced that he was scrapping that plan in favor of the development industry's interests. And he, they imposed their own OPA 405, their own Midtown plan, that gives the development industry that have been providing campaign funds to his coffers everything they asked for and more. So the anger and the frustration is real. And not only that, but they also brought back the Ontario Municipal Board rules in Bill 108. But the worst thing is, is that it's not even the crappy rules that they used to have, it's worse rules now. It makes it even harder for the city to be able to consider the context of quality of life in these kind of development matters. And it may end up restricting even how many community benefits that we can gain to be able to put into childcare and libraries and parks and all those things that we want for our kids and we want for our neighborhood. I live in the Young and Eglinton neighborhood and it affects my family too. So what we do here is when we're subject to wrong-headed provincial policy, we have to pragmatically think about, okay, how do you on the ground make life better for 
everyone who's subject to those decisions. So what we did in that development is fight for childcare. Because if, even if we knew we were not going to win at the OMB, we needed to make sure that we had social services to provide a better quality of life for people, young families who can't afford uh, ch child care or can't find child care in the area. But what we're, what we're considering right now is an agreement to, like the OMB already ruled on the development. This is about can the tenants have a, an affordable way through this journey? And that's what we are considering today. We, had st we have planning staff that have worked on this, and they have recommended um, not only a standard agreement, but improvements upon the standard agreement for those tenants. What is clear to me is that there is, um, I think, a lot of misunderstanding of this process. And unfortunately, sometimes there are individuals who deliberately go out and convey misinformation. And that's wrong, and that's mean, and it's not fair. So what I want to do is, um, my assistant Denise is here, and she's already reached out to a few of you who have come here. Every tenant who is affected by this has a right to have their voice heard and has a right to have access to information that affects your life and has a right to have the best possible deal that can be provided to make sure that your life is affordable in the future, to the best of our ability. And please con uh, talk with Denise before you leave. She's going to connect you with the right city staff who can review every detail of the agreement and make sure that if you've been misinformed, you get the answers you need, and if you simply don't have information, that you have access to it. That's your right, and that's our job to make sure that you've got that. To conclude, um, I love Young and Eglinton. It's my home. It's where we are raising our daughter for the long run. It's a neighborhood that has so much potential and so much to it. There's a reason we live there and there's a reason we love that neighborhood. But I am concerned that the policies that, are, that, that we are subject to by the provincial government, they're not giving us an opportunity to catch up with the, with the quality of life needs that we have. It's not about development versus no development. It's about, like I said earlier, leaving the place better than they found it. And right now the developers are getting rich and, we're, and our quality of life is getting poorer. And that's not right. And that has to change. Well, therefore, I, I, I move the recommendation. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just make a couple of quick remarks on this. Uh, this issue of uh, rental replacement is, is difficult for any of us when we have to deal with it. But of course, it's most difficult for the tenants. This is losing your home. And no matter how well we do in negotiating with the applicant, uh, you're still losing your home for a period of time. Um, and that's an unacceptable circumstance. I do want to note that the protections in Chapter 111 of the Toronto Code are the best protections anywhere in the province of Ontario. It's unique, it's leading, it's cutting edge, it's the best, but still it's unable to give the kind of protections that everyone around this table would give if we had better tools. Um, what I'm going to recommend to, to members of Toronto Community Council and, and members of the public generally, uh, on the Planning and Housing Committee, we recently established a subcommittee, uh, Councillor Bradford, Councillor Fletcher chairing it, and myself, um, to investigate uh, ways that the City of Toronto can do a better job protecting tenants' rights. Uh, things like dealing with rent evictions, of which these are similar to which these are similar. So I'm going to make sure that this item is brought up at that subcommittee and uh, make sure that, that, uh, that there's a notice sent out that members of the public who've been through this process uh, will be able to come and talk to us a little bit about if there's a way we can do better. Um, so with that, are there any other members who wish to speak to the item? Seeing no, no oh, I, Councillor Wong Tam. Councillor Wong Tam. Yeah, just very quickly, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to just echo the uh, the comments and concerns that have been raised by members of the committee, um, and specifically from the local councillor. Thank you to the deputies who came out to speak today. Um, we were just sort of, uh, I was sitting as, as, as I was listening to the deputants about some of the, the very large development applications that are coming in the, the core of the city, the downtown heart of the city. Uh, we are struggling with exactly the same issues that you're struggling with at Young and Eglinton. And and there are times where there is just 
it, you know, it is literally heartbreaking uh, to see the, the rapid change and intensification that's happening in neighborhoods and the fact that the city is grappling to keep up with the change. And I know that um, you know, it is very difficult as a local councillor to see an application re for rezoning come in that could affect uh, over 100 existing uh, uh, tenants. Uh, we do not. Uh, I, I, I know that I don't enjoy working on those applications because we know that the outcome is just going to be very difficult. It was stressful through the planning process, stressful through the relocation process, and then stressful on if you are even able to come back um, after years of construction. So I just want to commend the community for your resolve in showing up to speak today, and I also want to thank the local councillor because I know that these are very difficult conversations that you are in the middle of, doing the very best that you can to make sure that the local community is protected, especially for those who are directly infected by the construction and, and relocation. Um, and so much of, of what is happening is happening to you. And uh, working with the local councillor and as well as the planning staff, including the, the rental replacement staff, is literally your, your best path forward to getting the, the best possible outcome. And I have uh, every confidence that the local councillor and the City of Toronto staff will do everything they can to get you that very best outcome, despite the fact there are times where we are our hands are tied because of what is happening to us, whether it's provincial legislation or perhaps limitations into uh, what we, we can legislatively do. But if there is going to be a good deal to be um, extracted from this situation, I have every confidence that the local councillor uh, working with his local community will, will get you that outcome. So thank you very much for coming out today. And, uh, and Mr. Chair, we look forward to seeing the, the recommendations coming out of that particular subcommittee on tenant issues. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other members who wish to speak? Councillor Fletcher? Uh, yes, I do, and I want to say that all of the residents uh, of 131 are very lucky to have Councillor Matlow. He's a tremendous tenant advocate and I know has been swimming upstream with all of that's going on there. As I note here in the report that these 131 units will join a number of other units that are going to be 193 other replacement rental units. So we're large rental replacement building. I was having trouble, and I'm still having a little trouble understanding all of the numbers, and that under, knowing that there's 131 units in the building, and 59 of them have tenants with what I'm just going to say, the right to return at that rent. 59 of those tenants can come back at that exact rent once they sign, go out, and come back. But that means that over time, this building has empty units. It has 72 empty units. And that I'm just unclear from the development's lawyer, how many of those will be at average market rent? I know 52 of them have to, 59 of them have to be exact. He said there'd be 86. Um, so there's a whole number of numbers, and I think I'd like to ask the staff, I'd prefer to have a chart when we get this. This is all for me at the moment from planning staff. It's all about what the building's going to look like and um, a number of things of that kind. But I think we should be really clear on what those new rents look like, where the average market rent is, because the only reason we're allowing this demolition is in order to rebuild the rental housing. But I would really need to see that breakdown a lot in a much more clear way. And now that we know there's a larger building, what's the breakdown in uh, the 413 units? And I believe, I'm not sure if this has to go to council or we're just approving it here. Going to council? Going to council yeah. So for that time, that's what I would like to see in a lot clearer way. And I do feel for everybody that is there, all the condos going up and any rental buildings have now been put into a much larger building, 413 units is a lot bigger than a smaller walk up of 131. And that we are transforming our communities in a way I agree with the person who was here very eloquently said 
um, that we're moving at a pace of development, irrevocably changing the face of the city, kind of at a faster pace than we can manage for neighborhoods. Um, that is what many people are feeling, and I know that the councillors from Young and Eglinton, all of them that meet there, are concerned about more than just the buildings. They're concerned about the traffic. They're concerned about the impact of construction. So I think that uh, I think that this would be better if we're getting this affordable to have it clear. I'll also just go back to one of the things I always say. I don't think there's any city land here, but if there's ever any city-owned land, I don't care if it's Parking Authority, Toronto Community Housing, whoever it is, that we have not done well in the past in getting new affordable housing. And that curtain has to drop down very hard at this point. So I know you're here for a development application, but this council is very much seized with affordable housing and the affordability of these units is very important. Thanks. Okay, any other members to speak? Seeing none. Uh, Councillor Fletcher, I, I, I didn't take that as a formal motion, but I did see staff nod their head that they'll be able to provide you with that information. Uh, I'm happy to, I, I don't think we need to have a formal okay, motion. Okay, so we don't need a, a request uh, for a formal report. Would you like but, a formal motion to have the chart brought in for the meeting, or will you just undertake that? I don't think we need a formal motion. What we'll do is work with you, Councillor Fletcher, to make sure we understand exactly what you're uh, looking for, and, and we'll work with Councillor Matlow also. Thank you. And perhaps circulate that through a piece of correspondence or something. Okay? To Council. To Council. To yeah. Okay. So uh, with that, I, I suppose all that's in front of us is the item. Uh, so on the item, all those in favour? Opposed? That carries. Members. Um, because uh, Doug Ford reduced the size of council, um, several of the, a couple of the members uh, couldn't be here for the start of business this morning, so we had to hold 33 items. I propose that we go back through the agenda clearing process and uh, try to clear as many of those off as we can. Um, if you will turn to item TE25, which is on page 43 of your agenda summary sheets. I'll uh, just quickly move through those items that we held because some members of council couldn't be here for 9.30. If I can ask members of the public, um, this is a bit of an echoey room. Members of the public at the back of the room, hello, hello, hello. If I could ask you, if you have conversations, could you take them outside the room so that we can continue our business? Thanks very much. Okay, uh, Councillor Bailao, I'm gonna need you here. Okay, so item TE, item TE 9.25, appointments to business improvement area, boards of management, Councillor Bailao. TE 9.25, it's the BIA boards. Uh, motion to approve. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, 9.26. This uh, proposed official naming of future park at 250 Davenport Road. Councillor Cressy. Uh, on behalf of Councillor Layton, I'm moving to support the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE. Okay. Yeah. Um, item TE 9.27. Uh, proposed, sorry, 160 Front Street West Public Art Plan. Councillor Cressy. I will move the staff recommendations. Thank you. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Yes. Item TE 9.28, 489 to 539 King Street West Public Art Plan. Councillor Cressy. I'm going to move the staff recommendations, and I just want to say on this one, a lot of work has gone into it. The architecture itself is almost public art, but I'm glad to see the public art is going to be situated in the pops in the courtyard to try to draw people in. But I'll move the staff recommendations. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.29, 220, 234 Simcoe Street and 121 St. Patrick Street, public art plan. Councillor Cressy. 
Uh, I'm going to move the staff recommendations, and I just want to say, because we often whip through public art plans, that this site is located just nearby to OCAD and the AGO, and in fact, it's part of an artist's alley uh, space that's being created. But the proposal in front of us also includes, at the expense of, of, the, of Lantera, the developer, a mentoring bursary for OCAD U students to be engaged in the process, which I just think is an excellent initiative. Um, and so with that, I want to commend both the community and Lantera for helping to make that happen and move the staff recommendations. Um, okay, so on the item, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, now we jump forward to 9.32 the King Parliament Secondary Plan Review Proposed Secondary Plan. Uh, that was both Councillor Cressy and Wong Tan. We did hold it so, just to make sure that you had no issues. No? Thank you. Would like to move it? Uh, I'll just move it then. Okay, Councillor Wong Tam. All those in favor, opposed, that carried. Uh, 9.33 has speakers. 9.34. 462 Wellington Street West Zoning Amendment Preliminary Report. Councillor Cressy. Uh, I'm going to move the uh, Wong Tam Special, which is the expanded notice. And uh, just to say that while we're thrilled to see a proposal for a seniors building in King Spadina, which is great for a mixed neighborhood, this goes right through our height limit within the West Precinct to King Spadina. And so we want seniors, but not at the expense of a detailed height r rationale that we need to see uh, in line with planning principles. So for the benefit of the clerks from the Scarborough Community Council, this motion is what we call the Wong Tam Special. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you may want to share that with the members of the, Toronto East, Toronto, or the Scarborough Community Council. Okay. So uh, we'll take the uh, motion and the item together. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Okay, uh, sorry I'm being a little, I've got three different documents I have to track here. Uh, item TE 9.35, 73 Queens Park Crescent Official Plan Amendment and Zoning Bylaw Amendment Applications Preliminary Report. Uh, it's over here. Councillor Cressy on behalf of Councillor Layton. That's right. On behalf of Councillor Layton, I will move the staff recommendation, please. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.36, uh, designation of fire routes and amendment to Chapter 880 Fire Routes 138 St. Helens Avenue. Councillor Bailao. Approve, approve recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Don't take that away, I, I, I'll lose my place. Okay, um, three, seven, okay, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Item TE 9.37, construction staging area time extension four Avenue Road. Councillor Cressy on behalf of Councillor Layton. I believe there is, on behalf of Councillor Layton, an amendment to move this forward without recommendation. Just want to make sure that that le Councillor Layton's amendment is accurate there. Yeah. Just forward to Council without recommendation. No, I did not have a motion, but we can. Do we can that. just do that. Okay. If yeah, we, we can move that. that to Council without okay. recommendation. Council without rec. Correct. Thank okay. You. So we forward it to Council without recommendations. All those in favour of that motion, mm -hmm. opposed, that carries. Item TE 9.38, construction staging area, St. Patrick Street, 234 Simcoe Street. Councillor Cressy. I will move the staff recommendations and with thanks to the Grange Community Association for helping to pull this together. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.39. Uh, construction staging area 23 Spadina Avenue. Councillor Cressy, I believe you have a motion. Yes, I have an amendment, or nine amendments, if they can be put up on the screen. Uh, this, Dude, seriously? I do. Uh, so as part of this construction staging area, this is located at Spadina and Bremner, Fort York Boulevard. It is a very challenging and congested area. We've worked very closely with both the uh, 
developer as well as the community on a comprehensive uh, construction management plan. And with these nine amendments dealing with everything from lighting and cycling to public communications and signage, I'm happy to move this forward. Okay. It can still be built. It will just be safer for those who have to walk nearby. Yeah. Okay, so uh, why don't we take the amendment and the item together. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Um, members, I'm going to make a suggestion. Uh, um, I'm going to see if I can work with the clerk's office to bring us some, something consolidated of all the different ways we have ever tried to constrain these for the, the benefit of the public and see if, I know it's a lot of work, but we'll figure out a way to do it that's not going to crunch you in too much in terms of time so that we can maybe develop a bit of a package or a suite that staff have available to help councillors as they develop these with the app. Well, I think it's time that we review the, the general approach we take on these and this is a piece of it. So I will undertake to work with the clerk's office to see what the best approach to giving us uh, a, a better path forward on these. Fair enough? Okay. Um, and you got a note of that? Okay. So uh, on the amendments and the item, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, TE 9.40, construction staging area time extension phase two and three, Markham Street, Mervish Village. On behalf of uh, Councillor Layton, I'm happy to move the staff recommendation. On the recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item, item TE 9.41, construction staging area time extension 250 Davenport Road and 181 Bedford Road. Councillor Cressy. On behalf of Councillor Layton, I will move the staff recommendation. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.42, construction staging area time extension Hazelton Avenue, 128 Hazelton Avenue. Con Councillor Cressy, on behalf of Councillor Layton. On behalf of Councillor Layton, I will move the staff recommendation. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Moving to 945. No, that's, no, we're not going to do that one. No, no, Councillor Fletcher held that. Oh, okay. Uh, one second, I have to find my correct paper. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Bailao, this is uh, 9.46. It's the installation removal of on-street accessible parking spaces, September. The delegated, I assume there's no problem, but I thought I should give you a chance to look at it. Yeah, okay. So I'll move it. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.47, accessible loading zone, Russet Avenue. Councillor Bailao. Of recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. <laughs> Item TE 9.50, parking amendments, Prince Arthur Avenue. Councillor Cressy, on behalf of Councillor Layton. On behalf of Councillor Layton, I will move the staff recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. <laughs> Item TE 9.58, Commercial Boulevard Parking Appeal, 170 Bedford Road. Councillor Cressy, on behalf of Councillor Layton. Uh, on behalf of Councillor Layton, this is not 58 Bedford Road. I will move to defer this to November. Defer till November? Yes, please. Okay. On the motion to defer the item until the November meeting of Toronto East York Community Council, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Mr. Chair, did we jump over 5-7? Yeah. Okay, so then one of the documents I have here doesn't indicate that is held.
Sorry, our documents disagree. Yeah, it's just when we jumped it. If we move it twice, do we get double so the enforcement? Let's all take a moment. Uh, if you want to have a seventh inning stretch or a chat with your neighbor, now's the good time. Oh, there you go. Fifty-six? 50, no, 56 was done. 56 was done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did 57. No, we need to do 57. I now. just did 57. You just did 58. Oh. Yeah. So sorry. So 57. Okay. And All right. Yeah. Yeah. We have now brought our documents into accord. So I've got quorum. Uh, Item TE 9.57, Student Pickup Drop-Off Area, South Drive. Councillor Cressy, on behalf of Councillor Layton. I, on behalf of Councillor Layton, I will move the staff recommendation. On the staff recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Okay. Item TE 9.60. Uh, introduction of overnight on-street parking permit, Rowanwood Avenue between Young Street and Clooney Drive. Councillor Cressy, on behalf of Councillor Layton. On behalf of Councillor Layton, I'll move the staff recommendation. All those in favour, opposed, that carries. Two. Item TE 9.62. Uh, Proposed installation of speed bumps, first east-west public lane north of Dundas Street West between Manning Avenue and Euclid Avenue. Councillor Cressy, on behalf of Councillor Layton. On behalf of Councillor Layton, I'll move the staff recommendations. All those in favour, opposed, that carries. Yep. Speakers on 65. Okay, uh, TE 9.68, uh, speed limit reduction Niagara Street, Councillor Cressy. Uh, I will move the recommendations in my letter. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.69, reopening of item TE 2.59, speed hump, poll results, Pendrith Street. All those in favour of reopening the item? Opposed, that carries. Councillor Cressy, how would you like to proceed? Uh, Councillor Layton has declared a conflict on this item, uh, so it is in his ward, and I, I am moving the recommendations in my letter. But can we do a recorded vote as Councillor Layton has yeah. declared a conflict on this? Yes, just to. Well, the minutes will reflect that Councillor Layton was not present in the meeting. Perfect, that's fine. That's so, fine. He'll be marked absent. So he'll be that's marked fine. absent, so that, and since he's not here, he can't declare a conflict anyway. Okay. Um, item TE9. Okay, so on that item, uh, the recommendations in the communication. All those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 9.70, Parking Amendments, Elizabeth Street. Councillor Cressy, on behalf of Councillor Layton. I will move the recommendations in his letter. Okay, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Uh, TE 9.71, Parking Amendments, McMurrick Street. Councillor Cressy, on behalf of Councillor Layton. I will move the recommendations in Councillor Layton's letter. All those in favour, opposed, carried. TE 9.72, Speed limit reduction, McCall Street. Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you. And there should have been a revised copy that was circulated Yes, around. members, I want to draw your attention. Uh, a little while ago, a revised version of the letter was circulated to you. 
you want to take a look at it. Councillor Cressy? I will move the recommendations in, in our joint letter with Councillor Layton and note that Councillor Bradford asked if he could also have his photo alongside us, and we said only if he wore a turtleneck. Just saying. But yeah, I'll move the, the turtleneck today. Why do you only have the turtleneck for council? Like we're second rate? <laughs> Whatever. Okay. I will move the recommendations in Councillor Layton in my joint letter. Brad okay. Bradford has no role in it. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Sort of a Burl Ives thing, right? <laughs> Item TE 9.75, installation of speed humps on Harvey Avenue, Rochdale Avenue, and Kitchener Avenue. Councillor Bailau. Thank you. Approve installation. Uh, so improving installation as is the described alternate. in the letter. Yep. All those in favor, opposed, that carries. Item TE 9.76, reopening of item TE 8.54, traffic calming speed humps, Gladstone Avenue, Peel Avenue to Dundas West Street. On the reopening, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Councillor Bailau, how would you like to proceed? Let's make sure we're coordinated this time to approve the speed hump. So move the alternate recommendations. So delete the original recommendations yeah. and replace I, it with the, f the one and two from your letter. Mm -hmm. We're all clear on that? Mm -hmm. Good. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.77, parking amendments, Edwin Avenue, Ruskin Avenue to DuPont Street. Councillor Bailau. Approved recommendations in the letter. On the recommendations in the letter. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Oh. Item TE 9.78, Parking Amendments, Pelham Avenue. Councillor Bailau. Approve recommendations in the letter. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.79, Parking Amendments, Westmoreland Avenue between Bloor Street West and Shanley Street. Councillor Bailau. Approve recommendations in the letter. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Okay, um, you've just witnessed the clerk's department performing at an Olympic champion level. Well done. And we will now return to... We could add, if you wish, now to get it. Oh, okay. We could add 81 to 84, and they have been circulated. Okay. Uh, members, um, oh, Councillor Fletcher has stepped out, so you know what? You know what? Uh, oh, do you what? We were thinking of introducing the, new, the remaining new business. Okay, can I have a motion to introduce items TE 9.81 through 9.84? All the uh, motion, Councillor Fletcher, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Members, these have been circulated so we can dispose of them now. Councillor Fletcher? Yes. Yes. Um, on item TE 9.81, creating new affordable housing on Danforth, Councillor Fletcher. Yes, I'd like to uh, move this. We're starting a planning study, and I would like to add that as one of the into the terms of reference. I don't think it was on the other part of the Danforth. Councillor Bradford might want to do something like that in his section, but uh, it has to be part of the terms of reference where we can put affordable housing, yeah. how we're integrating it. Okay. Uh, on the recommendation in Councillor Fletcher's letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.82, Parking Regulations, Commissioner Street. Councillor Fletcher. Uh, parking Regulations, Commissioner Street is a uh, no standing zone, I believe. And I'll move that unless, uh, yeah, even though it's going to be closed forever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on the recommendation in Councillor Fletcher's letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.83, uh, improving pedestrian safety, pedestrian pathway between Strathcona Avenue and Bain Avenue. Councillor Fletcher. Uh, yes, I just, this is a closed road that's in behind a big Toronto community housing. Unclear who owns everything, unclear who's in charge, it's a pathway, and I need to get 
all the information on that, Mr. Chair. Okay. On the recommendations in Councillor Fletcher's letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Uh, item TE 9.84. Uh, expediting and prioritizing safety improvements to the Lakeshore Bathurst intersection. Councillor Cressy. So I'm going to move the recommendations in my letter, and if you'd indulge me for 30 seconds here. Since 2004, the C City of Toronto, through our staff, have identified that the Bathurst and Lakeshore intersection, a five arm intersection, is deeply unsafe. Since 2004. In 2014 and 15, it was identified through a comprehensive Bathurst Key neighbourhood plan that we needed immediate improvements to that intersection. 2014 and 15, nothing happened. In May of 2019, city staff, at my urging, brought forward a report saying they would close Fleet Street and make immediate improvements that would be in place by the end of the summer. It's now October, nothing has happened. In recent meetings, I've been told that staff are now reconsidering what to do at this intersection. That's 15 years. City staff have demonstrated that in just the last year, one year alone, the pedestrian island and the barriers surrounding it have been knocked down by cars six times that we know of. And so I know our staff are exceptional in working hard, and I know that some intersections like Bathurst and Lakeshore are hard to deal with, but as a city councillor, at some point, I don't know what more I can do. I can move motion after motion, report after report says that this is an unacceptably dangerous intersection, report after report says we need to do something about it, and day after day, nothing gets done. And so the recommendations in my letter are yet again to do something. And I've articulated what should be done, but just do something. Thank you. On the recommendation in Councillor Cressy's letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Okay, members, uh, if my foggy old brain is correct, we now go back to uh, TE 9.8, 2 to 8 Gloucester Street. And. Sorry, pardon me? Oh, oh, right. See, the foggy old brain didn't work. So, we can go to uh, Councillor Cressy, TE 9.1, naming of an existing public lane south of Barton Avenue, extending easterly from Clinton Street. Um, this is one of Councillor Layton's. I will move the, uh, on behalf of Councillor Layton, I will move the staff recommendations. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.2. Naming of existing public lane bounded by Harvard Street, Manning Avenue, Bloor Street West, and Clinton Street. Count Councillor Cressy. On behalf of Councillor Layton, I will move the staff recommendations. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Yeah, that's where I Okay, so now we can go to 9.8. I'll introduce it again so it's properly introduced. 2 through 8 Gloucester Street and 601 through 613 Young Street, zoning amendment application, removal of the holding symbol H, final report. Are there, do I have anyone registered? No. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none. Are there any questions of staff? None. Councillor Wong Tam. On item eight. On mem item eight. Gloucester and yes, Young. Correct. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I will just be moving the staff recommendations to uh, lift the the hold symbol. Um, it's been a lot of construction for the local community. The hold symbol was originally placed because there had to be a water main uh, replacement, and that water main replacement has now been done. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Carry. Item TE 9.9, 96 Benina Avenue and 379, 383, 385 and 391 Adelaide Street West, zoning bylaw amendment application, final report. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none. Any questions of staff? None. Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have an amendment, if it can be put on the screen, uh, which is to uh, adjust the Section 37 so that it is a little more flexible around community facilities and or public green space. 
Uh, and the second is to seek to uh, increase the amount of affordable housing within the area through the sale of the city-owned laneway on the site. Um, and with that, I will move the staff recommendations with that amendment. Just a few words on this. These are three heritage buildings located within the west precinct of King Spadina. There are few development sites left in King Spadina. So in this case, Allied, a partner we've worked with many times, identified three heritage buildings and they are actually building a structural mast and suspending nine stories above the heritage buildings. Two of the three are being fully retained and one is being partially retained. Uh, why is this a good thing? Well, it's a good thing from the perspective of heritage retention. It's a great thing from the perspective of commercial development meeting our emerging King Spadina secondary plan guidelines. And it also aligns with our Spadina Avenue corridor, which is to encourage office and commercial. If you were gonna try and do this as a residential, it might be a lot harder. But for the reasons that this meets our city planning framework within King Spadina for commercial, for, Sp for the Spadina Avenue and for heritage, this is a very creative fix. Not many, I can tell you, development partners could find a way to pull this off and work with the city and the community to do so. Allied has done it. And so kudos to their creativity, but all, more importantly for the substance of what's in front of us. And with my amendments, I'm happy to move the staff recommendations. Okay, uh, any other members to speak? Seeing none, we'll take the amendment first. On the amendment, all those in fav favor carried. Then on the amended item, all those in favor carried. Um, item TE 9.10, alterations to designated heritage properties intention to designate under part four, section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act an authority to enter into a heritage easement agreement, 96 Spadina Avenue and 379 and 383 Adelaide Street West. Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you, I will move the staff recommendations. This is the aligned component of the formal rezoning. This is on the heritage side, so I'm happy to move the staff recommendations. Okay, there's nothing in the attached report that needs to be moved, no. Okay, so on uh, item 10, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.11, alterations to designated heritage properties intention to designate under part four, section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act and authority to enter into a heritage easement agreement, 139141 and 143 Portland Street. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Actually, not one. Oh, do we need a motion to withdraw? Uh, yes. Ah, okay. So pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you. We actually, this was dealt with as a mot motion with a, an urgent um, motion without notice at Council last week, and as such, I believe I have a motion to rescind this. It's to rescind, if I'm correct. Withdraw. 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 Due to the adoption. Due to the adoption at City Council last week. Okay, just like the motion says. All those in favour of voting that reality did happen the way the motion describes? <laughs> None opposed, that carries. Okay. <sighs> Item TE 9.12, intention to designate under part four, section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act 145 Portland Street. And members note, there's again uh, an attached 12A. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Cressy. I will move the staff recommendations. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Okay, item TE 9.13, Cultural Heritage Evaluation, 79 and 81 Granby Street. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, questions of staff, no. Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I'd like to move an amendment, if the clerks can put that on the screen for me, that we refer this uh, item back to the Senior Manager of Heritage Preservation Services for review because the village, uh, McGill-Granby Village Residents Association has 
uh, uh, hired an independent consultant for a heritage evaluation. Uh, I would like staff to do a peer review of that evaluation and report back uh, to the November meeting of the Toronto Preservation Board um, uh, with their findings to see if that lines up. I recognize that it's, it's a fairly tight timeline, so I would just say uh, if the preservation staff cannot report back to November 12th, then do it as soon as possible. We will understand. And with that, uh, I'll be asking this committee for uh, this uh, community council for um, for support. Okay. Questions of the mover? No. Any other members wish to speak? No. All those in favor? Uh, opposed? That carries. Okay. TE 9.14, uh, residential demolition application 57 Elm Street. Any members of the public who wish to speak on this item? Seeing none. Uh, any questions of staff? No. Councillor Cressy? Uh, on behalf of Councillor Layton, I have a motion to defer this to November. On the motion to defer the item to no the November meeting, all those in favour? Opposed? Carried. Item TE. Okay, so we've already voted on this. That's what you just voted on if you were worried. Okay, item TE 9.15, residential application, demolition application, 59 Elm Street. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, questions of staff, none. Councillor Cressy. On behalf of Councillor Layton, I would like to move to defer this to November. Okay. We have a motion to defer this to the November 5th meeting, Toronto East York Community Council. All those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 9.16, residen residential demolition application 61 Elm Street. Uh, on behalf of Councillor Layton, I would like... Sorry, I just, are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation? No. Councillor Cressy. Sorry for jumping the gun. On behalf of Councillor Layton, I'd like to move to defer this to November. Okay. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE, I've lost my train. One seven. One seven. Mm -hmm. Residential demolition application 54A and 58 mm -hmm. Scollard Street and 1315 Bay Street. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, questions of staff, no. Councillor Cressy. On behalf of Councillor Layton, I will move the alternate, alternate recommendation, which is to approve the application to demolish. So recommendation two, which is to approve uh, with or without further conditions. Okay. Uh, on the motion, all those in favor, opposed, carried. <sighs> Item TE 9.18, residential demolition application, uh, 7981 and 85 Shooter Street. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, questions of staff? No, Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I will be moving a, um, an amendment, if I can, if the clerks can put that on the screen, please. Uh, the amendment is to approve the application to demolish the uh, subject residential buildings. Uh, there will be a series of conditions that will be attached to that, including the fact that uh, there has to be full um, heritage restoration, so there's got to be uh, proper documentation. How did you bring it back together? A letter of credit in case it doesn't happen, uh, although we've never never had to cash that in. Um, and, uh, and then prior to the release of the letter of credit, uh, all of this has to be done uh, to the satisfaction of our senior manager of Heritage Preservation Services. So there's quite a bit of supervision uh, and conditions attached to this. Okay. Can, can I just have one second? I need to confirm mm -hmm. with the clerk. Given that the staff report offered two alternatives, Councillor Wong Tam, what I'm going to suggest is that we take this as you selecting alternative two and then providing amendments to it. Okay. Um, so if everyone's clear on that, yeah. Uh, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 
9.19 residential demolition application 5 Pine Crescent uh, are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, questions of staff? No. Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much. I'd like to move the staff recommendations to refuse the application, please. So, I, uh, recommendation, recommendation one. one? Correct. Okay, so Councillor Bradford is moving recommendation one, which is to refuse. Any questions of him? No. Any other speakers? No. All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 9.20, uh, I have a deputant listed, um, Mr. Rashmi Nathwani, did I get that correct? That's correct. Thank you very much. Uh, Rashmi, you have five minutes. You can watch your time over here to my right. Thank you. I'll be brief. I'm the applicant for the demolition permit on behalf of the purchaser and I'm requesting that you approve this with either alternative one or two. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Ah, that's Very a very brief deputation, best kind. Um, are there any questions of the deputy? Councillor Matlow. Hi. Huh? Um, <clears throat> why, 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 why would you not uh, mention recommendation three to allow for conditions for beautification? Because we're achieving the same results with recommendation two anyways, if you'd see the attached letter. But you wouldn't be injured by recommendation three, would you? You wouldn't be injured in any way by recommendation no, three. No, but it, it would delay it considerably. It would take the city, I don't know how long it takes the city, but it takes a very long time for the agreements to be get done. The agreements would require a lot of time, and we have some work to do uh, in the next uh, couple of months on the site. There's a tank on the site that has to be removed. Okay, I'm, I'd like to stand this down for a few minutes, or perhaps till after lunch so I can discuss this with uh, staff. Okay. I wanna, I, I wanna, Before well, I do that, I just have to confer for a second. Yeah. What, how much have we got left? Yes. And nothing was scheduled for one o'clock? No. Nope. Well, in that so case, I can, I can ask staff It's conceivable we can finish our business before the lunch break? Then in that case, I will ask staff a question now. Okay. Or, or as soon as I have an opportunity to. Okay. So uh, do you want to ask formally or offline? I can ask formally. Okay. Go ahead. You have the floor. Actually, no. Before I do that, sorry. Uh, procedurally, are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Councillor Matlow, the floor is yours for questions of staff. I, my, my question is simply that... Um, if we chose uh, st uh, staff recommendation three, which I, um, and again, we, 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 Deputy and I have not spoken about this, and so I was surprised by his response. If we chose recommendation three, as I intend to do, uh, would there be uh, uh, any necessary delays, or is this simply about um, considering conditions to ensure that the site uh, is is in, in you know in a, in a state that is uh, amenable to the community uh, 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 due to the demolition. To the city staff, who would answer that question? To, to the, the chair, chair. Yeah. Um, uh, Toronto Building. The agreement would need to be uh, developed uh, with the assistance of uh, local councillor and uh, city. Uh, solicitor uh, that may take some time um, not sure what the time frame on that would be um, but agreement would be required for beautification and whatever conditions the councillor uh, and and city planning would seem fit could be introduced okay but uh, for example uh, um, hypothetically if we were to arrange a meeting soon after this meeting and, uh, and, and, and we're able to uh, uh, discuss and resolve the appropriate conditions within an hour's meeting. Uh, would there be much time after to, you know, w w would this impact uh, any delays or could it just be resolved in that hour if we, if we chose to resolve it then? I believe that should be. Well, I'm, just, I'm asking city staff if, if there's, like, are there any litigious issues that I'm not unaware of that would delay it? Are there any? Does it have to go anywhere? Does it be approved by anybody else? Or can we just sort of figure out the conditions we want and then that's it? I don't see any logistical reasons why this couldn't be done. Okay, thank you. 
Are there any other questions of staff? Seeing none, Councillor Matlow. Okay, so I, I am going to, given that, and I hope that's reassuring, <laughs> reassuring to the uh, to the applicant. I am going to uh, uh, ask that you support uh, uh, the recommendation three. Um, the um, this is really interesting thing. I've never come up about this before uh, because I didn't represent the city of York um, uh, prior to the last election. But the city of York, uh, even though uh, it, it is always due to our bylaw. Um, not really the choice of community council, whether or not to approve or oppose a demolition. Um, uh, it, we actually don't have a choice. We have to approve it. But the city of, Tor uh, city of York uh, has a bylaw that, uh, that, that, that conditions to, to beautify the site need to be considered uh, as part of that uh, demolition approval. So, I think in the, it's in the community's interest that if we have that tool to use, then we should use it. That being said, and I want to give this just as a sort of a nod of assurance to the applicant, um, this, we don't have the ability to oppose, we're not intending to oppose, but we do want to make sure that we have a meaningful conversation about ensuring that the site, uh, you know, it doesn't look like this awful derelict site uh, during the interim. And I think that we could very quickly arrive at a resolution to make sure that things move forward in, 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 in the right course, but at the same time is sensitive to the community. And I think we could do that together. And I look forward to working on that with you. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, members, I just want to draw your attention. So the uh, staff recommendations uh, contain an error. This, is, this will just help to, to understand what we're doing. In the staff recommendations, they provide three options. Option one or option two or option three. However, the agenda was circulated to you, uh, lists option two and option three. Don't look at the screen. This is not about what's in the screen. This is about what's in the staff report. And effectively, what Councillor Matlow is doing, despite what the recommendations in the staff report say, is picking the third option. Yes. And uh, uh, that was just a, 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 an error in the way the recommendations were written. The intention was always to have three options. Councillor Matlow is absolutely correct in the way he's proceeding here, which is to select one of the options, option three. So if that, just to make sure you all understand. Okay, so on Councillor Matlow's motion, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Councillor Wong Tam. Yes, thank you. Um, I would like to reopen TE 9.44, construction staging area for 219-231 Dundas East. Okay, on, uh, can you just tell me what the title of that is? Sorry, the title, the construction staging area for 219 to 31 Dundas Street East. Um, there's just a matter I wanted okay. to review so further. Okay, so I'm first going to take the motion to reopen. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? That carries. And then I'll just hold that down. And you will hold the item, okay. All right. Where am I now? Item 9.21, application to remove a private tree, 175 Walmer Road. Uh, are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, questions of staff, no. Councillor Cressy. Uh, I will, on behalf of Councillor Layton, move to defer this to November. On the motion to defer, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item 922, refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application located at 191 College Street, Henry Street, Flankage. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, questions of staff, no. Uh, Councillor Cressy. Uh, on behalf of Councillor Layton, I will move to defer this indefinitely. Okay, that's been so on to defer it indefinitely. All those in favor, opposed, carried. I've lost my place. Two, three now? Okay. Item TE 9.23, refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application located at 387 
Broadview Avenue, Simpson Avenue flankage. Uh, I have two speakers listed. First, Zoe Solano. Zoe, are you here? Hi, Zoe. If you want to, whatever makes you comfortable. So do you want to uh, speak together or are you each going to speak separately? It's, it's okay, Councillor Fletcher? Okay, thank you. We're okay, actually. You're okay? <laughs> World's best deputation. Thank you so much. Keeping up with the Olympics. Uh, you, you completely sold me on your position, whatever it might be. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, are there any questions of staff? No. Councillor Fletcher. I'm going to move uh, to install the Boulevard Cafe, please. Do we have a motion? I believe you do. There you go. There's a motion to approve the application for proposed Boulevard Cafe located at 387 Broadview Avenue, Simpson Avenue, Flankage. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Item T9.24, refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application located at 1042 Gerard Street, Galt Avenue, Flankage. Uh, members of the green sheet say there's a speaker, however, uh, that speaker has re uh, requested to have their name removed. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Fletcher. I move the installation of the Boulevard Cafe. At Gerard and Galt. I believe there's a motion. There we go. Thank you. Okay, on the motion in front of you, uh, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Now I'm completely lost. Item TE 9.33625 Runnymede Road and 40 Fiskin Avenue, Runnymede Health Care Center, Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Preliminary Report. Uh, Connie Dijak. Hi, Connie. Hi, Councillor. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so you have five minutes and you can watch your time over here to my right. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Connie Dijak. I'm the President and CEO of Runnymede Health Care Center. Um, we were fortunate enough uh, just before the last election to receive approval to build a 200-bed long-term care facility. Uh, Runnymede is located in uh, the Councillor Perks riding and uh, right at the corner of Dundas and St. John's. Uh, we're proposing to build the building uh, adjacent to the medically complex and rehab hospital, which would provide a nice continuum. What I wanted to do is not really talk about the project, but just about the need and how we demonstrated the need. So currently we have 5,879 individuals waiting for long-term care in Toronto Central Lynn, and that's where we are located. Of the 47% uh, of the long-term care bed capacity, 20 of the 36 homes need to be redeveloped to meet the new standard. And from the current assessment, this is a Toronto Central Lynn document which I will leave for you. Um, of those, um, we have many of the operators who are now leaving the City of Toronto uh, due to the costs of developing, first of all, the scarcity of land and then the costs of redevelopment. It is very expensive right now, as you all know, to redevelop in the City of Toronto because the city is booming. Uh, I just wanted to say that we have been meeting with the, the, the local residents and uh, we're trying to be very receptive and open, um, but we also have 200 people that we will be caring for who, quite frankly, have worked and lived their whole lives in the City of Toronto and now want to age in the City of Toronto. And it's a real tragedy that they have to move outside of the City of Toronto because of the, 
the scarcity of long-term care beds. So really, that's uh, basically all I wanted to talk about. And I know there are members of the team here and members of the community who will also be speaking to it. Um, this document, I will leave for you. I actually presented, uh, Councillor Cressy will probably remember, at Executive Committee when we were talking about development fees. And I will say that I have seen in many, many documents now to demonstrate the need for long-term care the statistics which I'm talking about here and it's linked with housing and the whole housing uh, initiative because as seniors get older we need to somehow find a place for them to be welcomed back in their communities where they've lived their whole lives. Uh, that's, that's about it. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputy? No? Connie, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Rita Bijon. Hi, Rita. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to speak here. My name is Vita Bijon, and our family moved into uh, the to St. John's Road in 1996. We were delighted to move into a family-friendly and very caring neighborhood. At the end of the block across the street from us was the original uh, Runnymede Healthcare, uh, Runnymede Chronic Care Hospital housed in a very old, um, the, the old Strathcona Public School, um, designed by James Ellis, uh, junction architect, and built in 1908. In front of that building were uh, Roman Doric columns supporting a porch, and in front of that, two stately native lindens, just to give you an idea of the age of the area. Um, neighbors enjoyed very good relations with the chronic care hospital. Neighborhood children were allowed to play on the very generous grounds that were located on the north side of the building, and patients uh, came and watched the kids play. Um, children on our side of the street grew up very aware that that institution housed people with chronic um, neurological disorders. Uh, we could hear people moaning and calling for help. So. For sure, in the neighborhood, we understood that there was a need for modernizing the facilities for the residents in that, um, at the chronic care hospital. In fact, the neighborhood uh, helped fundraise for funds to rebuild in that area. And during all of those years, we were told by the CEO that the institution would be rebuilt and there would be underground parking. However, the day that the uh, model was uh, exposed, we could see it was a six-story structure rather than a two-story structure, and there was no underground parking. In fact, it was like a tripling of the size of the parking lot directly across the street from us. Um, uh, when we saw that model, we were not happy with it. It was a, a, a huge departure from the residential tone of the area. And our then councillor presided over a series of community meetings uh, to try to mediate some kind of common ground and a model that would be acceptable, more palatable to uh, both the institution and the residents. And we ended up with the four-story building that is now located on the north side of the property. Um, those were the Years of construction were very painful. Um, I've added an addendum to just outline some of the problems that we um, lived through. Um, now, we had a meeting on October 1st, and at that meeting there were people who had attended the original meetings that were presided over by the previous CEO and the meetings that were presided over by um, our councillor at the time. So on October 1st, in the course of the presentations that were uh, made before us at Swansea Town Hall, it was absolutely the first time that those of us who had attended those various meetings heard that there had been an amendment to the zoning and that uh, the, the presenters were talking about the amendment that took place in 2002 somehow allowing for two buildings on the same site. So those of us that had been through all of these meetings were quite in shock to hear that. And the, you know, the prospect of living through yet more disruption, dust, noise, vibration, lack of communication on the part of the people that are in charge of the building, 
and, uh, and by the uh, healthcare center is just uh, shocking for all of us. Um, in fact, I would call it community busting because it's put us all in disarray and distress around that. Now, I do support um, a, a submission that was made by uh, a neighbor, Gabriel Garducci, Good Guiducci, and he pulled out the wording from the zoning changes of 2002, and he can't see, and I can't see anywhere in that wording where it talks about allowing two buildings. It talks about two purposes, and that's fine, but to build yet another uh, building uh, with a massive footprint in an area where we have two and a half level, uh, story buildings on the south side is just shocking for us. Increased parking, increased pressures on the neighborhood for parking, more pollution, lighting all night long, losing uh, sunlight. Um, and, and I do want to add one other thing. I've approached our MPP, Butila Karpochi, and even though this is a provincial development, she knows nothing. She has not been apprised of, uh, uh, she hasn't been kept I could ask you for one concluding thought, please, Rita. You're at your five minutes. I'd like to know what's going on. Why were we not made, those of us living directly uh, around the perimeter of the building, why were we not made aware of the zoning, the rezoning of 2002, okay. and that it carries the... the I'm know, going to have prospect. to stop you there, okay? You're well over time. Okay, uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Yes, please come forward. You could state your name for our clerk. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Chair. It's Raymond Cherry. I'm the Consul General uh, of the Republic of Malta, the Canada. Um, I'm here representing 243,000 Maltese that live in Canada. However, today specifically, I'll be talking to, on behalf of nearly 19,000 Maltese citizens and persons of Maltese descent who live in Little Malta or Malta Village, as it's better known. Um, I've only been here in this country for three months, beautiful country. I've spent um, these three months talking to the people, uh, Maltese people in this area, in, the, in this Malta Village area, especially in the area where there's um, uh, the hospital and the proposed um, uh, development. The, the overwhelming majority of the Maltese uh, who live in this area are um, very much in favor of this project. Most of them are age, an aging population. A, a number, a good number of them have problems um, and would definitely uh, need, and if they applied, would qualify for um, uh, long-term care and need. So, um, on behalf of these people, um, I would like to show um, the, uh, the disponibility of being in favor uh, of such a project. I come from a tiny country which is uh, half the size of Toronto, and we have very similar problems related to long-term care. There's a shortage, and a very acute shortage. And just to tell you, on my way to to coming here, I took the subway and I bumped into one of the Maltese people and she recognized me and said, in tears, um, I'm gonna have to live the place I, I've lived for for the last 61 years because I have nowhere to go. I'm on the list waiting to get into one of the long, long care places, but unfortunately there will be no places for her and she'll be moving way out of the city and being uprooted from their community, for a person that's lived there for so many, many years, uh, decades, not years, um, is a huge shock. It's a huge shock. And I just wanted to get across the message that basically um, the Maltese community is, is, will be very concerned um, if this project uh, doesn't go ahead. I understand the... the um, the concerns of the residents, and there are a number of these residents that are Maltese themselves. I've 
visited a number of them, and they've uh, overwhelmingly showed their support for this project. Um, a number of them mentioned as well, you know, uh, my property will gain as well value if there is services which didn't exist in the area and now will exist. So this is what I had to say, and uh, thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the deputy? No? Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Yes, sir. Please come forward and give us your name. My name is uh, Joe Sherry. I'm the president of the Maltese Canadian Federation, which is an umbrella of the clubs, associations in the, in the Maltese community, including St. Paul's Church. Um, 20 years ago, we applied as a community for a home, for a serious home, long-term home. Um, at the time, we applied as a not-for-profit, and unfortunately, most of the permits that were given out at the time were for profit or, or organizations. Um, Runnymede has been part of the Maltese community for quite a number of years, and uh, there have been a few Maltese uh, descent people that have been uh, looked after at, at uh, Runnymede, and we as a community always supported uh, this, uh, this hospital. Um, uh, this is an uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity for the Maltese community to be able to have some beds for long term beds for our aging, aging uh, community. Uh, we, were we were very happy to find out that there, is a designated, there are designated beds in this, uh, for the Maltese community in this uh, uh, project. And we, as a community, uh, are making a commitment to uh, support this project and also culturally be able to, uh, uh, to work with the hospital and support uh, uh, the uh, people that will be uh, uh, there. The, the Runmeet is situated close to the church, St. Paul's Church, a uh, few multi shops in the area, and the people that uh, li live there and hopefully will be able to uh, find space and beds at, at, at this new facility will stay within, within the, uh, the community. It is a known fact that the older the people, the older people get from any walks of life, um, the more there's, a, there's a, a, a tendency for them to pull to their roots and their roots being language mostly and anything cultural that has to do with their, with their, uh, um, uh, um, uh, where they come from. So it's a, it's a plea for, from the community to uh, have this uh, um, uh, uh, facility built and accommodate not, not just Maltese community members, but also quite a few other members of the community that live in, in, in the area. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Yes. Hi. Please introduce yourself. Hello. My name is Jim Ilke with Novia Corp. And, uh, we're the project managers for the project, and I, I just want to make a couple of comments about um, community consultation and also the information that we'll be providing throughout planning and during construction. So we understand it's a disruptive process, of course, to any community to have uh, a building of any size built, and especially one that is probably a little bit larger than its neighbors. So we want to assure the local residents that during this planning phase, the doors open to have discussions to get ideas about anything that we can do to make the development less impactful. I realize that at the end of the day, it can have, you know, it's impossible to make it zero impact, but there are always things that you can do. During construction, we're gonna be responsible for reviewing the constructability plan and the procedures that the contractors are undertaking to make this as smooth an experience as possible. 
The key here is to make sure that we run an open and transparent process, and that's what we're committed to doing. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions of the deputant? Seeing none, thank you very much. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none. Any questions of staff? No. Uh, members, so that you understand what we're doing, this is a preliminary report, and the recommendation is that we have a public meeting on October 1st, which we did. Um, so, uh, <laughs> nevertheless, we have to have it on record that we've approved the preliminary report and uh, are going to have a public meeting on October 1st. So, all in favour? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Item TE 9.44, Construction Staging 219231 Dundas Street East. Is this the one that was real? So this, so we had a motion to reconsider that, and then Councillor Wong Tam held it. Are you ready to dispose of the item now? But I'll just speak very quickly to it. Um, so, do you have any motions or anything? I do not have a okay. motion, but I do want to flag this for the developer, which is Menke's um, development. We, my, I was actually on a on a on a on walk of the downtown east with uh, Juliana Carbone, our our, um, our deputy city manager, uh, as of yesterday. And uh, we were walking, walking on Dundas East, um, and our route was then interrupted. Uh, we were literally unable to pass the sidewalk. Uh, and this particular, this particular um, portion of the street, which is actually a bend in Dundas East, where it meets George Street, uh, is extremely dangerous. The visibility is very poor, uh, and there happens to be um, a, a public school right there. It's a French public school, Gabrielle Roy. Um, and I can only imagine that uh, we just happen to be stumbling upon that particular passage. For the residents and the business operators and the stu students in particular that have to pass that site every single day, I don't know how long that path, that pedestrian passage was uh, was closed, but I know that uh, it's been closed for more than at least four days. There was no signage whatsoever uh, alerting uh, pedestrians that the passageway that they were relying on was going to abruptly end. Um, and at that point in time, to be quite honest, um, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I was uh, with uh, our, our deputy city manager trying to cross to the north side of Dundas and waiting for the, path, the, the vehicle traffic to slow down. Uh, and as we waited for for, for one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, and so forth, there were other pedestrians that gathered with us. Only were we able to cross the street because there, there was a mass of individuals that had gathered, uh, and we were able to be granted safe passage because some of the cars decided to stop for us. I just want to flag this for, for Menkes. Uh, I'm sure you probably have government relations people who are watching this, uh, this videotape. Um, what was, uh, what was there was unacceptable. And I recognize that you are working with uh, temporary occupations provided by, um, by staff. Uh, we will be uh, asking staff to go out to in investigate. And even if you have to close down that passage for whatever reason, whatever emergency uh, condition exists, what we expect you to do is, at the very minimum is provide a an alternative safe passage route. Uh, pedestrians cannot lose their sidewalk passage uh, to construction without, um, without any advance notice. Um, it was extremely dangerous, um, and what I saw there uh, with our deputy city manager, uh, and I'm very glad that there were no students at that time, uh, but I don't know how the students, quite honestly, would be able to travel westbound, sorry, eastbound on Dundas uh, Avenue, knowing that none of those students from the, from the school would be driving home. Uh, anytime soon. So they will rely on safe passage. They will rely on Menkes to make sure that they are granted safe passage. Uh, I did not see a flagman on post uh, or flag person on post. Um, there was no consideration whatsoever for the pedestrian experience. So I just flagged it. I'm not moving any additional amendments. You're going to be good given your uh, the occupancy, uh, but I will be back uh, in 24, 36 hours to make sure that everything that I spoke about is going to be remediated the next time round. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of the mover? Or sorry, there's no motion. So on the item, all those in favor, opposed, carried. We're getting very close, everybody. I know that uh, we've had a busy morning. Um, Next is item TE 9.45, Construction Staging Portland Flood Protection and Enabling Infrastructure Project. 
Councillor Fletcher. Um, I am going to defer that, please, to the next meeting. So we have a motion to defer it to the next meeting. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 9.65, installing, installing speed humps on Gilead Place, really, between King Street East and Eastern Avenue. Uh, Joe jo Cressy. Councillor Cressy, 6-5. 6-5? Eight five. No. Oh, sorry. One second, Mr. Chair. I apologize. Just pull that up. Oh yes. Oh, I, this is in Councillor Wong Tam. Yes. Yeah, sorry, uh, Mr. Speaker. You uh, this item was held because there was a. I think there was a speaker registered. Ah yes. Sorry. Okay. My apologies. We're working off three different. Bits yeah. of documents. Yes. <laughs> Coralina Limos. Are you Coralina? Hi, welcome. So you have five minutes. Uh, please, uh, you can be following your time on the clock to my right. Okay. Please go ahead. So uh, my name is Coralina Limos, and I live on King Street, just uh, east of Gilead. And on the board, you'll see a photograph of Gilead. Gilead is a city of Toronto public road or laneway, and um, it's only uh, one passage. Okay. Um, now, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on this street. This is, it, it, Gilead connects King and Front Street. So we're looking at it from King Street looking south. Where I live is right here at this hen here. Our property backs onto Cork Town Lane, which leads into Gilead Place. So our property would be here, and then Gilead, I mean, Cork Town Lane leads into Gilead. Now, I, uh, I realized from the councillor's letter, and, and I'm quite appreciative that Councillor Wan includes these notices in her email list, because this is the first time that I found out about it. Um, I had no idea that the people behind us from the Gilead row houses had put together a petition. Uh, they, they did it amongst themselves. They didn't include those on King Street. But anyway, what I do want to say is that because Gilead is only one street, this is the, uh, from King Street. And as you can see on this picture here, the only signage is on this side, which it says 30 miles per hour, and on the opposite side, which has no parking signs. On the south side, looking north, we have, again, 30 miles per hour and a, a, a sign there that says Court Town Lane. I think that to put um, speed humps, I mean, actually, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm going to hold your time. I have a, a little tiny piece of procedural business I have to do. I need a motion to uh, extend to, care, to complete the business. Move. We've got three, but they're all just little technical things. Unless everybody wants to talk about this, we'll be done. We'll be done in like five minutes. Can I have a motion to extend? Yes. Councillor Fletcher, all those in favour, opposed, carried. I'm very sorry to have interrupted you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the background on Gilead uh, Place row houses, when the owners purchased into these row houses, they knew the area opposite them was zone industrial. Actually, their row houses are built on former industrial lands. Gilead Place is a mixed-use City of Toronto public lane that connects King and Front Street. So when uh, whatever safety measures are implemented, they, uh, they should comply with city regulations and the access of emergency vehicles, solid waste and snow removal, which we have. Uh, I think that uh, to go from one extreme where possibly there's no signage or no way of uh, mitigating um, uh, heavy street traffic, which really there isn't. Um, I think that we should start in small steps, and I'm suggesting that that we need improved signage, 
may be a sign that says caution or slow down. I think that reducing the speed from 30 to 15 is a good way to go. And I also think that uh, we need some uh, paints on the pavement, uh, street pavement markings, and go from there. I think that going from pretty well nothing to speed bumps on a, a street that has that's only one block, it's a little bit overdone, or uh, a suggestion. Also, too, with this, uh, Gilead Street has two entrances to Corktown Lane, and I'm, I'm pretty well wondering where these speed bumps are gonna go. So I know it's only a, a proposal for a, 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 a study, but I just wanted to point this out in the initial, uh, before the study goes through, and so that there's a little bit of consideration. And that's what I have to say. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputy? No? Thank you very much for your time and your thoughts. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, uh, any questions of staff? No. Uh, it's me. I'm just trying to work out. It's, it's Kristen. Councillor Wong Tam. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Thank one you sheet has much. the name, one sheet has the recommendations, and another sheet has the deputations. It makes me crazy. Chair, you're doing a wonderful job. We can all attest to that. Um, thank you very much. And thank you, Carolina, for, for coming out to, uh, to speak to this matter. Uh, it's great to know that people do read our newsletters because sometimes uh, you put a lot of effort to it and you're not sure who is out there responding. So this is fantastic. Um, I will be moving the recommendations in my letter, and I'm hoping that uh, all the... Um, all the, uh, the feedback concerns that was raised by, by Carolina is going to be uh, considered by staff as they do the feasibility work that will come back uh, to our committee um, in February of 2020. Um, and I hope that, uh, I know that there are other concerns that were uh, raised by other local community members, including those who are on Gilead and on King and Front. Uh, we would be able to incorporate all those concerns into the staff's review as they come back uh, with some key recommendations for us. I don't think there's a, any problem in, in exploring every single uh, option that's out there. I do know that when it comes to these mixed-use environments, we are oftentimes um, challenged with heavy vehicle movement, uh, fast-moving vehicles, even though these are people's front yards or backyards. Um, all we need to do is just figure out how to design and, and uh, build out a street that's going to work for everyone. And the, the most important thing of all is, is, is dr that drives any of this is really uh, uh, road safety. Um, so that's what I'm hoping that we can achieve um, and see coming back in the, in the report in 2020, February. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions of Councillor Wong Tam? Seeing none. All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Now we have to do a little bit of fancy footwork. I need a motion to add uh, 9.85. Councillor Bradford, uh, so we'll take that, do that piece of business. Accelerating City Place Vision Zero Street Safety Improvements Ward 10. Where did Councillor Cressy go? I'm going to move it on. Ah, okay. Councillor Bradford. Thanks. On behalf of local Councillor Joe Cressy, I'd like to move the recommendations in the letter, please. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. I need a motion now to reconsider item 9.20, Councillor Fletcher. Um, no. No, Councillor, sorry, Councillor Matlow. Correct. I don't have any names. I'm just, I'm working on just handwritten notes now. Um, I, uh, I've just been informed that, uh, that the way that the, uh, the motion was uh, worded, just a couple words need to flip around, so I'm reopening uh, 9.20. Uh, the motion to reconsider. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Uh, we have a motion in front of us. Do you need to speak to it? No. no? Uh, on the motion in front of us, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Is it bylaws now? Uh, uh, reconsider to. Oh, okay. We'll yeah. just keep going back and redoing our work. <laughs> I need a motion to reconsider <laughs> item 9.82. That's, that's mine. Councillor Fletcher. I'd like to reconsider. Oh, eight. Councillor Wong Tam, you can't. Uh, oh, yes, you can, yeah. but then nobody else can. Yeah. You're sealing us into the room, Councillor Wong Tam. <laughs> we will remember that. Okay. Councillor Fletcher. I'm re moving nine, eight, to two. reconsider, 8-2. On a motion to reconsider, item 982. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Uh, 
And now I'm moving a different motion. On the motion Based in on front of us. Advice from transportation staff. On the motion in front of us, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Who has the bills? I move that the Toronto and East Toronto. Hang on, hang on. Councillor Matt, oh, you have a motion. You had to say that? <laughs> I do. Otherwise, how did you get the floor? People would have lost you know, their minds over this. Okay. Hello, my name is Councillor Josh Matlow, and I have a motion that the <laughs> which I endorse that the Toronto and East Shore Community Council pass and declare as bylaws bills 1401 to 1423. 1425 to 1428, 1430 to 1,444 and 1,446 to 1451 prepared for the October 10th, 2019 meeting nine of the Community Council. Very nice. So that was read with clarity and precision, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Wally would be On the motion. You could do All that too. Favor opposed. Carried. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor. Are there any questions of the mover? No, no, yes, I'd like to know uh, yeah. about yeah. that one. I think it, what number was that last number? Councilor um, Fletcher, yes. you have a motion. Go ahead. Yes, I do. I have a motion today that the Toronto and East York Community Council pass and declare as a bylaw a confirmatory bill to confirm the legislative proceedings of the Toronto and East York Community Council acting under delegated authority at meeting nine on October 10th, 2019. That motion was sweet music to me. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Members, that completes our business. Have a wonderful a day. Meeting? We don't normally have that. That was a rarity to get done by lunch, and I, I thank you all thank for uh, thank you. the work thank you, you did to get us Abby, there. Thank you for uh, sure. <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, 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 thank you, no. Deputy, for coming. Oh, that was your number oh. two. Yes, thank and you. I'm not sure where the bills one went. Oh, the bills are here. I'll that? sign okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, which board meeting was Cressy at this morning? Waterfront Toronto. Waterfront Toronto. Yeah. So it's. No. No, no, no. It's an emergency. It's an emergency meeting. And we're. This kind of thing is just. I know. You're so busy. That's, yeah. I know. And so it's not your fault. I feel anyway. it. I feel yeah. it. You feel that? Okay. We'll just take it 